What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the Season Gaming Big Cast, episode 287. It is a fine Sunday morning here out in Kansas City. And we have all four of us finally back together, guys. Man, it has been a year so far. Travis has got uh, he's got his, uh, I don't even know what kind of dance you call that. I'm just calling it a dance. <laughs> Travis Shimmy? Dance. Shimmy. Yeah, Shimmy. Yeah, that's good. That's good. We'll go with a Shimmy. But it's, it's, uh, it's good to dance. be back. <laughs> Oh man, I'm excited to be back. Um, it has been uh, it's been a journey this year so far with so much going on and holidays and everything else, and <laughs> Travis traveling uh, internationally and uh, you know all kinds of things going on. What? <laughs> <laughs> we lost Travis. I got lost Travis guys, already. I gotta send you guys a text. This is the most hilarious thing. Uh, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> you know the opening's going smoothly when we just yeah the opening's going smoothly when we interrupt with i'll okay. send you guys a text Sorry, um, before, the, before the show i was talking to you guys about a raven that was outside my window it's been yeah. just walking up a storm and then remember. while i was sitting here i get this message from the san francisco chronicle <laughs> <laughs> and it says it, it says sf is teeming with crows here's why the bird population has flourished and then it's got a chart of crows and ravens and the both both of the lines are like <laughs> really <laughs> far up. i just sent you guys the screenshot like we we're just literally just talking about how there's a raven outside my house screaming oh, man. uh yeah we were chatting before the show and travis is being hunted by a pack of ravens or a, a murder of yeah. crows if you will yeah um, murder of crows so um but anyway uh what's going on everyone good to see everyone in the chat um it's good to be back like i said uh we were expected to have detective seeds with us here today uh sadly i i don't know if i'm going to schedule him to be a guest on big cast anymore um he uh he got some very very sad news overnight and um his uh his mom passed away early this morning so he texted me super early this morning obviously said he's not going to make it so uh, if you do follow him uh and you're listening or watch the show please uh he posted about about an hour or two ago uh just you know wish him the best of course um but otherwise we will uh you know the four of us are here for the first time in a while we've got a lot to talk about obviously a lot of games we've been playing there's some big news items that have come out over the past several weeks and we will dive into those here shortly um of course we've got to catch up on a couple tide picks because uh tide hit us with some easter picks which uh you know, oh, she's God. been saving for a couple weeks, and I will just say that one of them is kind of cute, and one of them is horrifying. So, nice. yeah, we'll we'll start with uh, we'll start with uh, cute, I suppose. Oh God! Just, and this just throw the those up there. One? No, this is not the horrifying <laughs> one. Just wait, just wait. Wait a minute, like you know, not having hair really kind of does us some injustice here because <laughs> we just look yeah, like no rabbits and bunny. You look like a shaved guinea pig. Yeah. <laughs> like you're an experiment. <laughs> you look like a little bit of hair up on top of me. Like I'm Ho Hogue would look adorable if he was not bisected in this photo. He just <laughs> completely has been he has no lower body whatsoever. <laughs> he, he's covering up just viscera underneath his arms. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm leaning on my stomach there. I'm I'm doing a, a full <laughs> gold bloom. You just can't see my <laughs> legs back there. Oh, okay. I see. <laughs> I I don't yeah. believe you. Uh, <laughs> I like I like that Travis and Dan have full hands. I have three fingers and thumbs, and Hogue just has pause. fingers. You have paws. I've got human hands on my rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> <It's just weird. laughs> Oh, yeah, honestly, boy. Ames, you went full cartoon. Yours, you have no identifying uh, like traits that remain as mm. part of Ames. Like that is just no. fully a rabbit. <laughs> Other <laughs> than the headset that always gets put on, no matter yeah. what yeah. I am. Not you find your, your ears. ears, which yeah. is crazy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's on the back of my head. <laughs> yeah, dude, the funny is, I can tell which I can tell which video the screenshot came from based on the my hair in this rabbit photo so it's like, <laughs> i i know which appearance the ai based its rabbit me on <laughs> all right well take a guess at which one this was then oh Your god <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Oh <laughs> um, we have to stop AI, guys. I have fully yeah. aboard the stop AI trade at this point. Shut this it is down. Why the, this is Shut why the I part of AI it down. is really 
It's I want to make Dan's a Bellatro <laughs> Joker. <laughs> it does kind of look like that. Yeah, that's true. He that's, could be. Oh, Dan, Dan looks like some cursed image from history. For sure. <laughs> it could definitely be like a historical <laughs> painting that nobody understands. <laughs> it's confounded like, you know, historical artists for years. They're like, I don't oh. know why. I don't know why someone do that. Yeah, this is this is <laughs> this one's brutal for sure. Vince yeah. Willow says you're all part of Alice Madness Returns. That's probably a good oh, yeah. shout right there. Underrated. All game. of our all of our faces are pretty crazy, but mine is really offensive, I would say. <laughs> but what did they do, <laughs> dude? That's crazy what they did to my face. Like I I'm, I'm like all snout. It's weird, dude. And you know, you have a huge nose, and I love how your hair folds in between your ears. Yeah. I like that you're wearing a floral print suit jacket in front of a floral print <laughs> wallpaper. That's just really yeah. masterfully done. Yeah, it's like an indie film. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it is. <laughs> you're playing the Zach Braff part. Yeah, oh exactly. <laughs> this is brutal. Brutal. Yeah. Uh, audio listeners, it's worth uh, checking out the video just for these images alone. I'm just have put that out there. That's crazy. All right. Side, thank you as always. I know she's been saving those for a good laugh, so I appreciate it. Yeah, they're that. awesome. <clears throat> All right. Mm. Uh, with that, uh, big shout out. Where am I here? Getting back into the swing of how this application works. So I know that feeling. Go yeah, big shout out to Willow. Button. Gifted five season gaming memberships to, to kick us off today. Willow, thank you so much. Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. Um, that is very appreciated. Thank you so much. All right. Okay, well, we've I'm sure we've got a lot of games to talk about and what we've been playing and different things over the past few weeks. Uh, Hogue, you were mentioning spring break with the daughters. I know Travis has obviously been traveling, which we're going to talk about as well. What has been going on, guys? Hit, hit me. I've just been getting better. Uh, just kind of <laughs> sitting around <laughs> eating food. <laughs> what uh, games have you been playing? I've oh, been getting fatter. That's, I've been playing that's, games that's, with my that's not a game, Dan. Track. That's I've not a game. Well, yeah, the, the way he do, the way he does it, Ames, it's a game, yeah. dude. Yeah, he's got a, a scoreboard. <laughs> he's got win conditions. You know, a fail state. win conditions. <laughs> yeah, <dude. laughs> I'm winded from walking down the stairs. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Very yeah. good. No, uh, yeah, I have been playing uh, not much. Uh, MLB and Rise of the Ronin, and that is pretty much Those it. Games. I want yeah, the crossover. Yeah, Rise of the Show. Ronin um, just runs through the outfield of the Cubs game and just decimates everyone. MLB the yeah. Ronin. Um, Dan, talk to me about Rise of the Ronin. It is uh, awesome. Uh, I think it. I mean, for me, it's 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 a Dan game, you know. But it's it's also got those. It's it's. The combat is kind of the the shining star, and I had to. I started off on normal, and I was doing fine. And I had a kind of a rough patch. I, I went down to easy for I don't know, you know, a day or so, and then came back. It, it's kind of nice because as somebody who doesn't like those kind of souls like combat games where you got to be really really precise mm -hmm. and hit those parries just right on. Uh, I I was you know. At first, I was like, man, this is going to be a long, long game for me to get through. Um, and when I went back to just the normal difficulty after playing on easy, it kind of it, it, it's very accessible. You know, it, it kind of let me get my get my footing, I guess. Uh, whereas when I jump into like a Elden Ring or a Dark Souls, I mean, there's no, you know, Oh, I can turn turn it down or anything. You've got to be on the stick mm -hmm. with Rise of the Ronin. It kind of gives you a little bit of breathing room, allowing you to go down to uh, the the lower difficulty setting, and then come back and you know. You can even so you can change it any time. You can even yeah. jack up the easiness. You can like increase the power of your health potions and things like that at that easiest level. Oh, Ronin oh, has yeah. a lot of buttons. Oh yeah, there it. there is some. Yeah, there's Sliders. yeah, there's a lot of yeah. It's, it's 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 just really fun. It's 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 the setting for me. Also, I love that you know Japanese uh, historical setting. You know, kind of similar to Ghost of Tsushima, or you know, uh, the hell was it? The Yakuza all the, game. All the all the other games that have come. Out. Ichin. Yeah. E yeah, Ichin. Yeah, like a dragon. Ichin. Yeah, that, I mean, it, it's it was. I mean, there's the the characters are the, they're historical, true to life characters, um, that were taken obviously with some liberties. Uh, in each and, and also in this game, but 
I, I just love that setting, really. I think Oni Musha will... convinced me that Nobunaga was a demon lord. So they, the the Asian <laughs> developers are always taking a little bit of liberty with these things. Yeah, or they're trying to push their their agenda. Hook, you know, maybe. Uh, I don't. It's all about. It's all about revising those history books, bro. Got to got to tell me who was a demon lord. Well, history. certainly Rise of the Ronin uh, stands for America is evil pretty early on. Uh, oh, yeah. But not as a political Classic. statement, really. Well, also so, the British. Not, not as a political statement? Explain no, how British, British, what do we statement. ever do? Leave us alone. <laughs> <laughs> the Japanese have a complicated <laughs> relationship with Commodore Matthew Perry. That's apparent uh, like, immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Um, He's my friend, and, and also the actor Matthew Perry, just, <laughs> just in general. But who does? Really complicated. They weren't, they weren't friends. Yeah, they weren't friends. Um, <laughs> what um? What's the character building like? Um, uh, like, how do you kind of? Okay, so like, does it have any? Yeah, I yeah. mean, there's yeah. So you start off, you pick your 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 fighting style, I guess, or whatever it is, and there's there's like you know, depending on what kind of weapon you want to use throughout the game, and you can switch it and respect throughout the game if you want to. Uh, I just took like the whatever killer was, I think it was called, and it was that your katanas, uh, your uh, bigger swords, I can't remember what the hell they're called either. Uh, and, uh, <clears throat> you know, a lot of skills, uh, different kind of skill tree, like you have your regular skill points and you also have these other skill points that you earn through uh, building bonds with other people, uh, doing different missions or finding items. Uh, like strength, dexterity, charm, I think intellect, I think the four of them. And those are used to also level up, you know, whatever skills you want. It's actually really, really in depth for, for, I don't know if Team Ninja's ever done a game like this. You know, I know they've really not done a, like an open world game as much, but like, you know, they, they kind of nailed it with the RPG stuff, but we, you know, it, there's also a lot, a lot of like bloat. It is bloat goaded. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> Blow a, for sure. I refuse to listen to anyone talking about bloat that hasn't played Rebirth. <laughs> I've played Rebirth, yeah. It's got bloat. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it does. It definitely has some. I mean, it, but but it also what, what's really nice about the game is that like you like I, I love Ghost of Tsushima and I you know played the hell out of it. There are times where it's like I got to get to this spot to start this next mission, and it could take me ten minutes you know, just to ride the horse across the dam. You know, this one, everything seems like really, really close. You know, it opens up a lot of fast travel, but even when you don't have to fast travel, like nothing seems super far away from you at any given point. It's got an uh, auto horse button. So it's got, yeah, you can do that too. Yeah. Okay. Um, um It's it, the graphics are meh, you know, but they are meh. it seems, it seems to run smooth and yeah, play on performance mode. I don't have any real big issues with the uh, frame rate. Uh, every once in a while it drops, but generally it's pretty smooth. It's just it's just a fun game, uh, and and I'm really kind of digging the combat, which I don't think normally I would uh, in a game like this. I think you'd like it, Ains, uh, and I think you could probably jack it up to the higher difficulty. And you know, I think Ains would love it. it. I'm I'm willing I to stand on that, no question. Yeah, uh, mm. but I will tell you this: I really like Ronin. I'll talk about why in just a second. But when I turned it on and I played the first couple minutes or hours i thought that i had wasted my money i i thought that i this was a mistake <clears throat> i shouldn't have purchased this game had a really really bad first impression you get a couple of early smallish linear levels and i didn't know what i was getting into but essentially rise of the ronin is the next ninja gaiden game not from the nes era from like the xbox when it was in its heyday for those ninja gaiden black games yep. ninja gaiden all those games ronin captures that it's not neo it's ninja gaiden and then they add an open world to that. And the combat is so essentially quick and violent and deadly that it, it really does work for what it's trying to convey and is really enjoyable to play in a way that I did not find with Neo or some of the other games of this genre. It really does feel more like a Sekiro Ninja Gaiden type experience. And I think that's really going to work for you, Ains. And I think it's got a really good kind of growth curve. I think Dan undersold it a little bit because it's got different skill points for the various different attributes that you have as a character on top of all the other things that are happening in the open world. And so you really do get to build what you want. And then the weapon that you pick is going to change essentially all of the attack patterns that you use. And uh, you can you can then have different stances that also change how those attack patterns work with each weapon. 
So you've mm -hmm. got like layers on layers of setting up what you want to play as, all with some really great combat that I don't think is matched even by the Dark Souls games that I've played, but I know you guys play them better than me. Yeah. But the graphics are 100% um, meh. They do not have the artistry no. of Ghost of Tsushima at yeah. all. That's yeah, not I, that big of a deal. My, it's, it's... Yeah, I don't really care about the look either, but I will say, somebody who plays a lot of these um, Souls-like games, I, I don't think the combat's that great. Uh, I'm playing on the hardest difficulty and haven't really found it super challenging. Granted, I'm like, I, you said that the beginning was your least favorite part, uh, uh, or Hogue. I'm, I'm probably like... <clears throat> six hours into it five or six so i'm in the open world but you know i haven't seen a ton um but i haven't been that impressed I, I would say for me it's probably good not great where it stands right now but i i just they keep making these these samurai games and they're kind of like zombie games to me now where like they just keep making them and and they're they keep getting yes. worse too that's the other yeah. thing is like sakuro was great and then ghost of shusima which i liked less and then woe long and then this and i'm just like i feel like we've seen this enough and you know this isn't better than sekiro so uh i find myself in a little not much is position. better than sekiro to be fair though yeah i mean i, I love i love that game but uh sekiro yeah. is very guard railed right you're gonna do what we want you to do and you're gonna do it well you're not gonna progress this is different it is yeah it is different and i think it is going for a different player which is why it has uh you know different difficulty settings and stuff but um i will say it is it it's uh interesting enough to where i want to keep playing it i don't know if i'm gonna have time to keep playing it but uh yeah I, for me for me it's probably good but not anything amazing so okay. far and there's i think personally wrong, for dude. me i enjoy it more than sekiro ghost of tsushima is a different type of game obviously yeah, it's, for sure. it's a samurai game but ghost of tsushima is very much that uh, Sony PlayStation over the shoulder adventure with an open world where you get character missions like oh right it's the definitely photo. the PlayStation template game and yeah. then and then this is much more like okay you've got these various things in various places you've got an area of unrest you can open up a town there if you go and clear out the bandits and that gets you that advantage and it'll probably also get you a fast travel point and then you can go do this over here in a shrine and that'll get you something and and go and grow your character in a way that you want. I, I think, honestly, the only negative, and I'm not a big graphics guy, is that in the open world, you do have experiences with, like, a Red Dead for the West or Ghost of Tsushima for, for Samurai experiences, and it's just not matched by what Team Ninja can put out there. So you can't go there just to be like, I can't wait to see what's over the next hill. You can't be a full exploration type player. You have to enjoy that combat, and I do think it holds up better than Travis, but Travis is like killing dragons in the first 10 minutes of Elden Ring. So he's not the same player as me. No, I'm definitely not either. <laughs> it's that's, so, that's why I like it. I think I think it's just, you know, aside from the setting, which I love, I love those kind of games, but it's just, I, I'm just finally glad I can, I, I know it's not the same necessarily as some of these other games, but I, it feels like I'm actually, pro, you know, making progress mm. and actually doing something. You know, when I'm in the combat part of it, it, it feels like I'm, you know, when you when you hit that, you know, you know, counter spark or whatever it is, and, you know, you watch the guy kind of fly over and then you hit that button and you got, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just one thing after another. And I've never really liked those kind of games where it's just like pattern, you know, do this, do this, repeat, do this, do this, this, repeat, always got a new thing, learn that, do this, do this, repeat. It, it, it happens so much faster than that. That you just it is so you know, fast, so fast, and 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 I really really Do you like, like the it. instant deadliness on the hardest difficulty. You know, you get hit once and no, it feels realistic when you die. <laughs> yeah. That's not enjoyable. It is so fast. I mean, that's what I I didn't even remember that I loved it so much from Ninja Gaiden. Like I haven't played those games in a long long time, and then I was playing this, and at first, like I said, it's just kind of what am I doing? This is kind of dumb. It doesn't look great. I shouldn't have bought this. I was convinced by the hype, that kind of thing. And then it's like, no, this is really good. And I miss Ninja Gaiden. I miss those games. Those were really cool things that existed. Good in action time. games. And this, this is that to me. Okay. So yeah, it I sounded really more and more cool. like I should have bought this over. We were ch talking before the show that I might have maybe should have bought this instead of Dragon's Dogma 2, which I have kind of pulled away from. It hasn't done much for me. 
And I know yeah, uh, we can talk about Dragon's Dogma we will. if we want to get yelled yeah. at by the Internet. Um, yeah, but yeah, I also I also fell off Dragon's Dogma. I think for the most part, Dragon's Dogma is a cool tech toy. It has some cool ideas about physics and and not locking on and not having some of those combos that Dan was just talking about. And then AI pawns that are more interesting than you would think based on the first game. But for the most part, it uses all of those toys to tell a story <laughs> in a world that I find boring. And to some extent, if you're going to ask me to spend my time in a world, I better not find it boring. And so that's what happened with Dragon's Dogma for me. I think that's well, let me let me go back to Rise of the Room real quick, just so I'm clear on it. It is not like Neo. There's no loot. Right. There I mean, is there's... loot, but not like not like Neo loot. Yeah, it's not, like it's Neo. not set up like that. It's more this set is, up like a from is... game where you can find new items just mm -hmm. around yeah. the world. You will okay. like literally if you fight like uh, three guys, right? You will pick up at least two weapons and four or five pieces of gear. And it's it's really just kind of incremental garbage, you know, until you start finding like the legendary stuff, which is not it doesn't take very long to get into that point. But okay, and, and it's got a nice setting where you can, you know, every time you go to like, you know, your 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 campfire or your your flag or whatever it is, and it'll automatically disassemble everything that you know, based on whatever level it is. So I just have everything just to disassemble or sell it off. Whatever one you choose, you can kind of okay. set that up. Yeah, I have All a right. blood I katana, you know. <laughs> okay, because like the Neo the Neo games, I always said were interesting to me because I really liked the combat. Obviously, they were going for more of the souls like there. Um, and I really liked the loot system, which I thought was very well done, but I hated the level design. And now it's sounding like this is more along the kind of a little more open Ninja Gaiden style. Uh, combat and level design uh, with a little less focus on loot, which is okay. I was just curious. Um, and for the record, so. I find it really hard. I know Travis does not, uh, and Travis is playing it only with his toes on the hardest difficulty setting, but <laughs> I find it really hard. Not quite. I, I, I think I lost most of my lives early on to wild boars. Not, oh, not, God. not enemy ninjas. The boars murdered me many, many times. So many times. I think it's pretty right, standard on this show, though. Like, you've got the left side and the right side in terms of game difficulty. Yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> it is they fun on the hardest difficulty. I mean, I think the hardest difficulty is... I mean, it's just... I don't know. For me, it, it, it takes away knowing that at any point I could just be like, let's lower the difficulty and get through it. I don't, I don't know why to me, but it just... Because you're you a know. gatekeeping piece of garbage. <laughs> no, <laughs> Shut he's, up. A, he's against the difficulty setting yeah. because he's tempted. He's a weak. <laughs> no, like not really. Joke. Um, Come on. Yeah. Um, but anyway, that's fair. Uh, Rick says uh, has way more gear than from games, but nowhere near as much as Neo. So no, kind no. of an in between, I guess. That's fair. Okay. Um, yeah. Back to Dragon Stogman too. Yeah, I was. You know, I, I'm maybe 10 hours in. I've only played a few more hours since we last talked because it lost me to, I think you said it well, Rick, which is, um, it's just, if you're going to make me be in this world that kind of has this open sandboxy, physicy feel to it, right? Where you can kind of do things as you see fit. You got to at least make it interesting. And there, <laughs> I haven't found anything interesting to this point. I, it's um, like they don't care to make it interesting for you. They, they think that the toys are interesting enough, and I think to some extent they're right, right? And by toys, I mean that AI and, and what the pawns are doing, although if they tell me they've seen a ladder again, I'm going to kill them. Uh, and <laughs> and I, I like that. I like experimental-type yeah. games. I like We've talked about here, I like the Eurojank games. I like some of the, some of the games like that. I'm going to mention one later on, I think. But it just didn't work for me long-term. And I, I tried it a number of times because... I think I've mentioned here, I've been playing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth with my daughter. She unfortunately got sick, and so I basically had a week where I couldn't advance that game because I wasn't in an open world area, and I didn't have fast travel, but a whole bunch of things that don't really matter, but I couldn't advance that for about a week. And so I was playing a bunch of different things, tried to get into Dragon's Dogma a number of times, and it's just like the most basic fantasy, here's a troll, here's a mountain, uh, here's a medieval village kind of thing that just never really attracted me to, to spend my time there when I could be doing something else. Now, I know a lot of people feel that way about the other games that I would recommend, so I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you're wrong to feel like Dragon's Dogma is awesome or that, um, that Rick's an idiot because he's not getting how cool it is to be in this total sandbox and physics and darkness and everything <laughs> else. I will accept all of that. 
but it just hasn't worked for me. No, me neither. But that's fine. I'll speak. I'll speak on the other side. Uh, I I think um, the strength of Dragon's Dogma Two is in its uh, kind of chaos and not handholdiness, and it is a very Eastern RPG design. And it's like uh, I I think it does appeal to the same Elden Ring player in that. Uh, Elden Ring is the kind of game where stuff will happen without you knowing in the background and unintended consequences and your first playthrough yeah. is probably not going to be smooth and all that stuff. <clears throat> um, Excuse me. I, I think in some in some cases it might take that philosophy a little too far with stuff like the Dragon's Plague where it's like, all right, that's that can ruin somebody's entire playthrough. I don't know if you guys have encountered that. Um, but yeah, I, I, I plan on playing a, a bit more because I do enjoy kind of the um, unconventional uh, unexpected stuff happening where like a, a quest might be time gated and you or uh, time limited and you don't know that and your lack of inaction causes somebody to die or a quest line to have a certain outcome and uh, kind of the I, that to me that's interesting um, in a way that like you know Western RPG design is like all about you getting 100% of the stuff and all the missions going your way and getting like the good outcome of the game and that sort of stuff. And so I like that as well, but I think it is a breath of fresh air when you don't see RPGs like this uh, very often where it's more about kind of like um, the unexpected chaos. And so there is something interesting about that. Um, obviously, uh, that, that's actually like, why I bought it is you right, know, yeah. just no guidance, just go do what you see fit, which I love. Um, mm -hmm. But I think, to ho my problem is what Hogue said is that so and, and I, I know I always come back to Elden Ring, so I apologize. But even another like, let's use Baldur's Gate this time, right? Like, you know, there's going to be some weird, interesting stuff around nearly every corner that you can stumble upon. And I just don't get that from Dragon's Dogma. It's like, oh, God, I got to fight more harpies. Oh, I'm going to fight more goblins. Oh, I found a troll. And there's another troll. And by the way, around the corner, there's but there's another troll. And it's like, dude, this is boring me to tears. Like, there's just. I don't know. Or I'll be in a thought. conversation yeah. and the troll will go and kill the person I'm con conversing with. I mean, it's it's that kind of thing. <laughs> and I, I find that kind of funny, to be honest. I don't <laughs> hate that stuff. I don't. I really don't. And I I agree with you, Travis, that some of the edges have been kind of uh, smoothed away in a lot of game design now. And I I think that that is creating a kind of homogenous vanilla sense for a lot of the games. Mm -hmm. And I've sat here and said I I advocate for variety. And I it's risking i want to advocate for that risk taking but the people that take aren't going to work for me in all instances and for for me on this it doesn't feel interesting enough to engage when i have 600 other things to play so hey, uh hold on one sec Hogue. Uh, i was getting some bad feedback i don't know okay. if it was your it mic or just it was... me good to know no 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 yeah. it was like you cut out a bit Hogue, and then there was some sharp kind of um static -y stuff static, i don't yeah. know if it had to do with dan who happened to leave right at that moment or not i no, I, I think he i think he thought his earbuds were dying as i did uh, uh oh yeah i just that heard just it again no i think i think it's on hoax side sorry everyone um who's listening anyway uh we can continue the conversation while yeah. i sort that out travis but uh yeah so yeah i i, I think um to your guys' point, my problems with Dragon's Dogma 2 so far have been that some of the rough edges go a little too far, especially when it comes to like game design choices like the way fast travel works or uh, the UI and UX experience and like, stuff like that. I think a lot of that like goes so far that it stops being novel and starts just being annoying and gets to the same kind of the same problem I had with like death stranding, which is like a lot of time the game is just boring. Even when it's trying to do something cool, there's certain pockets of time where I'm just like, well, this is not really all that compelling or, or fun. Yeah. And so, yeah. um, but, but I, but I, I just, I, I guess I feel like I have to stand up for the game because it is so weird and experimental and, tries new stuff and really takes away the Western RPG guardrails of something like a Baldur's Gate three and goes the complete opposite direction. Yeah, I, I think there's like something that. really cool to that. Yeah. I think okay. that is really cool. All right. Let me yeah, do an audio check. You sound good. You, you sound okay for the moment. Sexy. All right. Well, just let me know again if that happens. I've been having some difficulty with my mic, but I, I haven't recently. So okay. apologies for that. No, you're good. You're good. It was just apologies one of those kind of hard staticky cuts. Um, by the way, I was playing around with this while Dan was talking about Rise of Ronan. I couldn't get it on the screen, but I think 
yeah bloat I've, goat. I've got, I've got <laughs> the bloat goat i've got to fix yeah. that we're gonna make it into gift form and uh, get that yeah there, there but... should be like a button that you press where it like does the you know how they s stamp like a sticker across the screen exactly you know, exactly plop, yeah and it makes like the noise and then we hear you know like if, <laughs> if we could get that going that would be amazing <laughs> bloat goat. i'll get it i'll get it i'll get it Give me time to work on it. Um, yeah. Can you get a voice to say a bloat goat when it pops down across the screen too? You like, just did. All you got to do is send me yourself saying it and I'll put it let's in. Ju let's just turn this into like a, a shock jockey radio show where we have like all these <laughs> bloat weird, goat. Weird reactions. Bloat goat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Ty Guy and the Ains. Yeah. <laughs> Ty, Ty Guy and the Ains. Oh my God. He just he <laughs> created a great Ty show. Ty Guy and the Ains. <laughs> Ty Guy in the A, Saturday mornings. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> Ricky and the douche. Hanging out every Sunday. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, let me shout out one game so I don't forget about it. It's a little game called Saviorless, um, which is a, uh, a very small indie game. It's actually the first independent game published out of Cuba which has been in development for several years by primarily two people, very small uh, group worked on this. Um, it was originally kind of uh, had this funding behind it that the money ran out because it was only $10,000. Um, and then they continued to work on it for years and, you know, go through trying to find a publisher and all these things. So long story short, the game came out, I believe this week, earlier this week. Um, we reviewed it. Last uh, year. That's weird. Say it again. It says last year. Did it come out on Steam like or way early? No, it's it's no, it only just came out on Steam this week. I don't know why. That's weird. Okay. Oh, yeah, um, no, but yeah. anyway, uh it's a um it's a 2D game with like hand-drawn animations, kind of side scrolling, um, playing into some mythological stuff. And uh, you know, our reviews up on the channel and the site, uh, Ray reviewed it for us, and uh, you know, I think he gave it a seven or seven point five, uh, something like that. But um he, he kind of enjoyed it. He said, you know, you wish some of the storytelling behind the actual characters was better, but generally it's a really good game. But I just wanted to shout it out because um, really neat to see if you read the story about the developer and the two main guys who tried to get this game published, especially coming out of Cuba and the tensions and trying to do that. Um, it's really interesting. So check that out. Cool. Uh, just give it a look. Yeah, I've not heard of this one. And I think the game's like $12. Like it's not, you know, it's not like a $60 game or anything. So. Uh, if you like those kind of 2D classic experiences from the 16-bit era. But like I said, it's kind of very pretty, too. It's got a really nice artistic kind of it's quality. It's $12 and on sale, 10% off, $11.69. There you go. Wait, that, that math doesn't that add up. Is that 10% off? That doesn't add up at all. <laughs> it, it must be, be 12 dollars with 10% off. 12 dollars okay. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 12.99 exactly. Boom. Math that. man right math. there. Math there man go. right there. He got, he got it in his head, baby. <laughs> it's what i do um what else you got hogue i know you've got like 13 games we haven't heard of on those notes over there let me hear. i think i only have a few that you haven't heard of over here but i did <laughs> want to mention one that i was quite enjoying that i think is published by devolver so it's not quite okay. out of left field entirely but it's a game i'm playing called pepper grinder which is i a, did see this which is okay. a 2d kind of action game that takes the the notion of like digging with a uh, with a drill bit and makes that part of the action so you kind of drill down into soft sand and then use that same power to get up to make big jumps into another area of soft sand and then you find hidden things around the the level and i i really enjoy it i really like interesting ideas and i haven't played this type of game before and so i i think that folks would get a kick out of it it, it didn't cost a lot i think it was under 15 um but it is a it is a 2d indie type game with an interesting idea and hook and i think people will get a kick out of it so i wanted the to way you that describe one. that by drilling into soft sand so you can then jump up and drill into more soft sand really uh <laughs> <laughs> very compelling right I, i'm trying to picture what that kind of game that is and all, you know what That's came into my head good. was dig dug so i don't know if you've done it uh, a great service there well, it's shovel it's fair. It's a, it's a fair criticism of my ability to describe <laughs> this game. I find the same difficulty with most Devolver published games, uh, but it's a 2D action game. You go left to right, and instead of just jumping on mushrooms or going in pipes or whatever, you've got a drill bit that's attached to you, essentially. The, the character's name is Pepper. You're a little girl, 
and the grinder is the big machine that you have and you can drill okay. down into the ground and it's very fast. So you go uh, around that uh, that drilling section and you can use it to be your platforming. I got you. That makes more sense. Okay. Beba so, grinder. Yeah, I saw, I saw it. Yeah, I saw it uh, literally on uh, Twitter this morning from someone on my feed. Um, I like to mention it in games like this because I think it's very accessible. I think people will like it in general. I think it's got a a, a good um, uh, art style, as Travis mentioned, and I think it's a lot of fun on kind of the baseline level. It's enjoyable to interact with, so I recommend it. Nice, 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 nice. Uh-huh. Um, fun. before, fun, before yes. we talk about the next game, let me get caught up on some uh, comments and super chats real quick. Yeah. Dan, you, you Your back, boy. sir. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. He recharged his, his, his headphones. The new earbuds are in. Yeah. yeah. No, I just want to get the Bluetooth. They seem to work better. <laughs> Rick Davis. All right. Shout out Rick, Rick. Davis <clears throat> with the, uh, member comment morning guys. Want to send a huge congrats to Luke and Logan at XEP for their yeah. first live episode yesterday good yep. job guys i was lucky enough to be on the wrap-up episode too very cool yes yes good shout job. out to xcp they did do their first live show mm-hmm. yesterday i was helping luke earlier this week kind of talk through some of the stream yard options you know how you can manage it so it uh, sounds like it went well i was working yesterday so i didn't get to swing by but yeah always cool when you do your first live show so congrats to them cool don don the ten dollar super chat uh good morning uh cast bit <laughs> it's too early for that stuff. I survived my trip <laughs> to New York City for Sacred Symbols 300. Nice uh, celebration. Very nice. Uh, still plugging through uh, Rebirth at the point of no return. Did everything. 133 hours hard <laughs> mode for Plat or uh, DD2 next. Uh, Dragon. How about Dragon. neither? Infinite wealth. If you haven't done it, Don. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, that's a good one. one. But uh, yeah, if you if between those two, Dragon's Dogma two for sure. Don't replay that game for the platinum. <laughs> you have to replay the whole game? Yeah. Well, I mean, the hard mode for remake and rebirth is going through without heals and things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, oh, don't no. do that. Yeah, don't do that. Just play Dragon's Dogma <laughs> 2 if you really... That sounds exhausting. It does. Sounds, you know. They're fun for puzzles. platinum, though? Do you need the platinum? How much is that going to help you in life? Yeah. Don't get me started. Right on, on the top of your resume. Yeah, yeah. you put it on your grave soon. <laughs> Too much time. <laughs> Don uh Don hit us with three super chats. So let me get so cast a bit makes us sound like a fishing podcast immediately. It's kind of interesting. Let's do it, man. That's our that's our next turn. Cast, cast a bit. bit. I'm yeah. down. Let's talk about it. Yeah. Let's from, see from who the knows about fishing. <laughs> yeah. Who here has know. fished? Do you guys know? Have you guys fished a lot? Dude, I'm you like can literally fish fishing. in the pond on my property. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't fished in the pond, though. But I'll, <laughs> I'll be honest. I have, yes, I have fished in the ocean and lake. Okay. Yes, I have fished. I'm not Good. a big fisher, though. I couldn't talk to you intelligently about it. Okay. Hogue, fisher? Yeah. You look, you I look have like somebody who knows a lot before, about fishing. But I do not fish a lot. I could see you yeah. in, like, cargo shorts in a lake or in a river, like, fly fishing. You know, doing the... <laughs> doing the uh, oh, is that how you fly fish? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. That's just his, like that's what he calls that dance move at the club. <laughs> yeah, fly fishing. <laughs> Dan, you oh, fish? Man. Of course, I'm. I, I can tie all kinds of knots on can my you line. Catch a and... fish with your hands, like <laughs> scoop it up. In Nothing the river. to do with fishing. He could just tie no. a lot of knots. Yeah. Can you can yeah. you do that thing where you plunge your hand into a river and have a fish? No. Cat fishing. <laughs> you, know, you know that thing where they like karate chop the river and then they have a they have a fish in their hand <laughs> <laughs> no we don't we don't do that here in kansas oh my god uh, that's good stuff all right moving on don thank you we'll get your other super chats here travis is yeah me. uh with five dollars uh well i like ronin if i don't play souls likes it doesn't appear to be one uh play I can't promise. demo yeah, but it's with, not it's not souls like required. You don't have to like no. souls games to like Rise of the Ronin. No, yeah, I think if you can play Stellar Blade, you're you're going to be more than good on Rise of the Ronin, especially with the uh, difficulty options. Honestly, Stellar yeah. Blade is the more souls game of the ones you mentioned. Travis is right. Yeah, there. I would, I would say he's right. Yeah, uh, tough, play Stellar Blade with the girlfriend, huh? How did she think about that? <laughs> Travis, have you played the Stellar Blade demo? I have. 
This is a game where the main character comes down with a techno lace collar wearing mm -hmm. a matching tie. This yeah. is, despite what the internet might tell you, a doll dress up simulator. Yes. And it's going to be enjoyed by everyone equally. I promise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think some people are going to enjoy it a little bit more than me. <laughs> and I think some people are going to try homes. to make their name with uh, certain public public publications in decrying uh, the game for reasons that I don't want to go into right now. But I think people it's, it's at the very, level very they're playing the game are going to enjoy it. <laughs> it is jiggly. I mean, the the creative director is talking about it's jiggle physics. You know, the the yeah, old look, the old ploy. So my thing about the 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 jiggle sexual conversation that this game seems to have drawn to it. Uh, by the developer's request, really, I think that they're they're kind of drumming this up. It seems like um, is that I have nothing wrong with sexuality in games. I've been on the show many times to promote dating sims, but I will say for this game, it makes me want to play it less because it's weird. <laughs> it just is weird to me that I, that that is a distracting part of the game that seems to have no place in what the game it is doing. So. But, uh, you know, the demo was all right. I don't think it's that good of a Souls like like the combat was. I don't think the, I don't think the timing was right. The boss fight was good, but the uh, fighting against the minions. I was talking to Ebontis about this. Like it was a little a little janky to me. I would agree that you know. it's a little janky, um, but there's a lot of games that get away with a little janky. That's um, true. It's so really I think Souls like <laughs> I think Stellar Blade will be OK. And I, I do think fine. essentially borrowing liberally from the near automata playbook is going to work for a lot of people. Another game that also, you know, certain times, you know, you're you get to 1% health and all your clothes fall off. I'm like, all right. <laughs> it reminds me of those Senran Kugura games. You guys ever play those? No. No. Oh, okay. That's like a game where like there's a button where you go into like super mode and it like rips all your character's clothes off and then you enter like a a melee thing and you're like all right i'm uncomfortable anyone else <laughs> <laughs> anyone else uncomfortable with this with this high school age girls yet, clothes but... exploding uh, yeah, yeah yeah it's weird all right color blade uh, has that... done a good job marketing itself to certain right. corners of the internet i think that's um, true. but i don't I think, think it's and i think it's very intentional by the way Hogue. i think it's very intentional yeah well, i use is. the word marketing yeah 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 I connect um, with it because I also jiggle like that when I walk true. Up downstairs. Dude, this guy's <laughs> thick. This is what people don't understand. If we had a if we had a lower <laughs> half body cam on the show, Dan would be the star of it. Like really, I I, I cut it off right here because it starts yeah. getting out of control. Yeah, it would be distract there. the whole show. Nobody would hear yeah. a word we're saying. It would just be they don't anyway. Show. Let's be honest. It'd be the Dan yeah, show, bro. True. Um I bet you could Dom, throw it backwards in a circle, huh, Dan? Can you, uh, <laughs> for sure, <laughs> Travis is off the rails today? <laughs> you see what going did... to, you see what going to Canada does to him? Yeah, I just, yeah. I just imagine Dan on his, you know, doing a handstand against a wall, twerking, and it gave me joy, and I think it will give joy to other people as well. So, yeah. as the only person right. here who's actually hung out with Dan, you, you need to stop. <laughs> Dan doesn't even need the wall. <laughs> no. Yeah, dude. Yeah. We're moving on. Go we are moving on. on. Ty, those are our next AI picks, by the way. So let's get on that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see that next. No, <laughs> don't. You're creating AI porn. Don't yes. do it. <laughs> Don, with another ten dollars super chat. Where's seeds? I missed the start of the show. I hope you all had a nice week off for Easter. Uh, driving to the girlfriend's today to celebrate my birthday. Happy birthday. Nice. Uh, happy, birthday. happy birthday. Yeah, I got a surprise dinner for hers in two weeks. Nice, nice, Don. Happy birthday, my friend. Um, yeah, and thank you. Birthday. Yeah, I hope your Easter was good as well. Seeds, uh, unfortunately, I mentioned at the start of the show, his uh, his mother passed uh, early this morning. So got a text from him like very early this morning, obviously, saying he wasn't going to make it. So he will be back at some point in time uh, for now. If you follow him uh, on, on Twitter or anyone else's YouTube channel, just wish him the best. So. Thank you very much, Don. Uh, shout out Midnight Dreary with a uh, season gamer membership. Thank you very much, Midnight Dreary. Midnight Dreary gives a membership on like every show we do, even on our cast co-op shows as well so over here at the SG side. So thank you so much. Appreciate that. Tao. Tao with $5. Thanks, Tao. Uh, what's up, BitCasters? So can we finally stop calling Team Ninja Games Souls-like when they are Gaiden-like? Have fun, guys. I'm fine sure, with that. Certainly Ronin is. 
Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And I mean, I mean, these games go back a very, very long way. So yeah. Um, it's almost, it feels almost at times. And, and you, as we all know, you don't find much bigger souls and from fans than me, but it almost feels like a dis- disservice calling team Ninja games. Souls likes, um, they well, came. They, they've before. leaned into it in some cases. Like, they have. Uh, they have. I, I mean, long, they were, the they industry have. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, I, I previewed um, Wo Long and they were calling their game uh, a Souls like, and that was clearly yeah. their inspiration. So. And I do think uh, Ronin is much better than Wo Long. I do. I was going to say, I couldn't I think, really get into Wo Long. I was going to ask you. I think you they're about, about the same to me. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. You're allowed to be wrong. <laughs> so are you. <laughs> As you demonstrated so many times. Hey, I know I'm allowed. I've just never used it. Yeah, sure. <laughs> we'll take a survey on that. Where do we stand on uh, Resident Evil? Has Hogan ever been wrong? Yeah. Where, where do we stand on Has Hogan? This is wrong? the fastest moving survey we've ever seen here on the chat. Yeah. Wow. It's 100% <laughs> agreement. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, to Megatron and Starscream trying to get Ho call the Optimus, no doubt. Yeah, yeah, it, it did definitely come through like a a bad sound wave at one point. Star, sorry about that. Hey. You're all good, Tal. Thank you, man. Good to see you. And Eric, Mr. Game Positive, Eric, Game Positive, uh, six ninety nine Canadian. When is Ains going to finally stand up for democracy and do his part <laughs> in protecting Super Earth uh, from the disgusting Terminid and? automaton scum this is a great <laughs> great super chat and a great question because mm. Ains looks like a character from hell divers too and the fact that he has not played it is pretty horrifying <laughs> you look like you'd fit right in with that group of that group don't, of boys don't they all have like suits and helmets on do you see them no, normally I, mean, you know, I haven't they're, played they're, it. They're, i haven't played it. Oh, okay well you know they do but in the cut scenes they've got like the the very soldiery Oh, you know, yeah. I like that you say cutscenes. Like there are more than one of them. Yeah, I mean that's true. There is only one. <laughs> but you know, he he looks like uh, the the character after he gets his head shaved. No <laughs> cutscene. You know what I'm talking about? I told you when Mass Effect came out, in 2007, the original. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was skinnier and had a tiny bit of hair on the top. My whole family called me Shepard. Nice. Like, I looked just like. Him. And did you did you respond, Rex? <laughs> Rex. <laughs> Shepherd, Rex. Shepherd. He just walked in every room and said it was his favorite on the Citadel. Yeah, yeah, this is my favorite here. Well, that was the sequel, uh, Eric, the superior. Sequel. I don't know. I'll play Hell Divers at some point. There's no big rush for me. You should. You should. That game is actually good. I will say. Uh, no, I've heard I it's am, great. I I am shocked by because <clears> I, when I previewed that game, my big concern was I don't know if they're going to do the live service thing well, and they have taken a really unconventional approach to live service. And again, they are content light i think but i think the i underestimated the replayability and the thing that they're doing with their gm model which i think is yes. super unique and interesting um, well and they've, and they've done a good job selling jeff yeah and they've done a really good job with like the meme ability and kind of the um online intrigue with what they're doing and the plotting and they've leaned so hard into the setting um that i really hope it continues to do well because it's a to me it's kind of like a different avenue for successful live service game that isn't 100 percent folk to, focused on seasons and delivering content like crazy mm-hmm. um so i hope it continues to do really well but i you know I, I it's one of those games that i played mostly before it was out and i see all my friends playing it now and i wish i could hop back in because it looks like a ton of fun yeah very people, fair. Very people good. doing difficulty nines and stuff which <clears throat> i played that in demo and it was like brutal but it seems like people are really getting the hang of it now so it's cool nice nice Eric, thank you. And finally, from Rayman. Yeah, with a member comment. Uh, can I plug for the nonprofit Makers Making Change? The engineer accessible living aids like game controllers that can be 3D printed for free. That's no. awesome. No, you cannot. <laughs> no, you cannot. Nope. You cannot do it. No, nope. no way. Um, yeah, that's, not here. Uh, not that's very cool. Test. We actually got my son a very nice 3D printer for Christmas, and he's been just making all kinds of stuff. But um, I love seeing stuff like this. This is really neat. So that's very nice. the seeds in the chat. I oh, see uh, with a ridiculously generous super chat. Um, got this one, Dan. Text of seeds, $50 super chat. Wanted to swing through to show some love. Sorry I couldn't make it today under the circumstances. Much love, guys. Seeds, you did not have to do that, my friend. Yeah, man. We have uh, the, uh, um 
He actually did have to do that. Uh, Forty nine ninety nine is the no show fee that Ains charges anytime <laughs> we don't we don't make it the cancellation fee. Cancellation without, fee. You know, yeah. uh, it's very even even Hogue couldn't get out of that contract. It's built True. in. Yeah, yeah it's, it's it's it's, it's a one hundred and forty eight days advance notice. Um, yeah, otherwise, that's right. yeah. Yeah. Um, seeds. No, uh, we have uh, called you out twice uh, so far. If you, uh, I don't know if you've been listening. Obviously, I don't know what's going on, but uh, yeah, all, much love to you, dude. Um, and the family and, uh, you know, uh, what's obviously you're going to be going through the next week plus. So all the best and we'll talk soon. Thank you very much. Wow. I, I keep trying to move on and, and these guys just keep coming. Rayman oh, gives in 10 yeah, Hoglaw memberships. Very generous. Right, man. Thank you very much. That is very nice. All of you. right. Generous people out there today, by the way, we are, uh, I think I mentioned last time, or maybe I mentioned on cast that, uh, you know, with BitCast kind of being uh, Easter and off and on and us not being here and, and me obviously dealing with my stuff, the, the SG YouTube channel took a hit in the algorithm. So uh, sharing this out really would help us. We got, we're already over 250 people hanging out with us here right now. So if you could share this out, give it a like on both sides of the house, you know, the usual stuff we asked for, it would really, really help. Uh, I try think to get, it'll be more stable now, right? I think so. Gotta, yeah. Gotta, gotta get back ahead of that curve. Well, yeah. I, I do think that uh, to some extent you're apologizing mm -hmm. or explaining uh, for things that are beyond your control. I can tell you that everyone I know in the YouTube space has had an algorithm hit in quarter one here. It's it's just been a weird time on YouTube. It has so been. definitely share it around. Help us out. Absolutely. We think we're having good conversations here, but it's not your fault. It's not Travis's fault. It's not Dan's fault. It's not my fault. I think it's okay to have a week off every once in a while. Uh, and YouTube should be better at that than it is. Also true. Also true. Yep. All right. We got caught up on comments. Thank you so much for everybody for the generosity. So Absolutely. Far. Um, Talk so about games. Yeah. Still talking about games. So I want to just mention one to get your guys' thoughts because you talked about this game several months ago and, and um, one of our discord members uh, commented on Apalia which was, yeah. uh, I can talk correct about me if I'm wrong, isn't that like the cozy MMO type thing? It is. It's a cozy okay. MMO made by an indie developer, uh, Singularity6. Uh, okay. They are, um, I covered them extensively uh, during their uh, yeah. closed and then open beta launch. And uh, they announced this week that they, uh, or they, I don't know if they announced it, but it came out that they laid off about a third of their staff, which is crazy. Yeah. Uh, and a ton of, a ton of it people up. it's also crazy because that game is actually not out yet it's still technically in its beta i mean you can play it on pretty much every platform but like they just enjoyed their steam launch i think they put out a press release recently that they had over a million players um and so there are all these kind of like promising things but again it is a free-to-play game that uh is relying purely on uh, cosmetic microtransactions for like your character clothes and stuff like that. So um, super uh, sad to hear about that, especially since I know some of the people who got laid off because I was involved with uh, reporting on that studio. I was like the guy delivering all the news on that studio and stuff. So I just had like a lot of contacts there. Um, so yeah, uh, a bummer of a story and really unexpected because it wasn't one of those like corporate you know, we're forcing you to get lean or whatever. It seems like right. this yeah. this maybe actually needed to happen. And it also happened to some people who are pretty high up. So, yeah, real bummer. They, they're the ones that, you know, they impact the bottom line more usually. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Damn, that's a shame to hear. Yeah, I hadn't I hadn't really heard about that game because it's not my type of game, but I hadn't heard about sure. it since we talked about it a few months back. And then someone on the Discord brought it up and I was like, oh, that's the same thing. That's sad to hear. Yeah. So. I can tell you it has a really dedicated community. I know this because my fiance still plays it regularly. It's one of those games where like if you're if you find a resource out in the world that's valuable rather than one person just like harvesting it, they get into the chat and they say, hey, super good resource on me. And then they wait like five minutes for people to show up and they chop it down together so everybody can get the resources. It's oh, like one of those cool. games, like, like, damn, like everybody here is so considerate and nice because if it was just me, I'd be like, I'm not waiting five minutes. I'm chopping this thing down and moving on. Yeah. 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 Uh, they have like a really good, um, a really good community around it. Uh, and I could tell you my fiance was pretty devastated by this news. She was like, no, yeah. when I sent it to her. So, um, I think there are a, a pretty, a pretty big, um, 
a group of people who play this game and are really enjoying it. I think this honestly just might be their monetization model was not uh, great because I, I don't know why you would spend money because really the mm. only thing is your cosmetic clothes. You can get everything else in the game, all of the items that you can acquire, everything. So I think their mon monetization model may have been a little too kind to the player. Kind, yeah. 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 Uh, sorry, Rick. Not Pal World. Uh, maybe I said it weird. Palia. Palia. P a l i a. Not Pal World. Yeah. Also known as Palia. Also known as <laughs> yeah. I think according I tend to, the to developers, want to call it Palia. Palia. Yeah, I want to call it Palia too. According to the developers, it has no correct pronunciation. They designed the the name Palia Palia to be interpreted however you want, and they're all correct according to the developer. So. It's really good, but it's certainly the case that when you're making a free-to-play game, <clears throat> that's essentially step one, make a good game. Uh, yeah. And then step two is getting the math right, figuring out exactly what you're going to monetize. And especially if you're in the cozy sphere and you want to be seen as the friend of the player, figuring out exactly how friendly you need to be uh, while still keeping the lights on and the people fed is a real trick. And that's that's really, really hard. So <laughs> I'm not surprised that that's happened to essentially a first run at something like this because Palia is huge. Like it's it's way bigger than I thought it was when Travis first told me about it. And so I think it's a shame, but it's not a surprise because there's there's a lot of folks at these big companies that that sometimes get a lot of flack for having economists and all the people working behind the scenes to figure these things out. But that that is part of the equation when you're talking about monetizing a free to play game. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair so enough. Uh, if you if you do care about cozy games at all or uh, Palia, uh, you should go and buy like a an outfit. I went and did it when I saw this news. Spent like 10, 15 bucks. Throw some money their way. I I want to support this game because it's unique and interesting, and I would love it to at least make it to its one point Because I mean, it's not even out yet. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. Now, Travis, I don't want to lawyer you so early in the week. Mm -hmm. But you are the one that stands <laughs> on principle for early access is out because they're taking money. Correct. Right? So if you're selling cosmetics, aren't you out in some real way? I think I think you're out. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I mean, I would like to, it to reach its 1.0. I guess that's maybe a better way to say it. But sure. um, I just I, it, it feels like it's uh, this is like a really bad sign. And I'm not saying the studio is going under or anything, but it obviously feels like a not great sign for where it's at in its life cycle, especially as an MMO, one that's supposed to have like a long tail and last for years. It feels like um, I, I don't want to see it go down. Uh, I don't see something really bad happen at this point, especially since you pointed out like there's a lot in it. And I think it has more players than we uh that we, that we everyone thought. i've showed it to has really connected with it like it is a very positive experience for them i think people are going to like it but in terms of keeping those lights on just getting your foot in the door of a free-to-play game doesn't do that so it, it becomes a, it becomes a second step yeah to your point i think they did get the math wrong just based on and when, it, when they showed it originally in the closed beta when they explained their monetization model my response was so positive i was like wow that's crazy that you're you know, giving everything except for the clothes, like you can just customize anything. Nothing is, is money gated. Um, and I think that probably worked against them in this case. Well, so. and the next friction point will be that they'll probably have to take some stuff away and, and charge for, for some stuff that they didn't originally. And then the early access people are, are that's, that's tough to keep that. Yeah. It's it's hard to go backwards, or just charge for the game when it hits 1.0. They did that with um, was it Disney Dreamlight Valley? I think they did that with where. It well, and they took a lot of flack for that though. It was supposed to be a yeah. free to play game, and then they essentially said no, it's not going to be a free to play game anymore. Yep. Yeah. Um, maybe there's a reason for that because I also don't really understand how Disney Dreamlight makes any money if they don't charge for um that they have like a season pass model they have a but, battle pass they do yeah battle it, pass. It, it hasn't it hasn't it didn't strike me as like especially essential or anything so i don't know it's interesting i hope they figure it out i hope this is just a bump in the road because i do think their game's good and i'd like to uh review it is really good check version. it out yeah yeah there you go fair enough before we move on to major topics because we've got to talk about eternal strands obviously travis we yes. Need to talk about Hellblade Two. We got to talk about a couple other things, but before we do that, any other games you guys would like to shout out that you've been playing or checking yes, out? Yes, uh, I want to talk about the continuing epic adventures of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. First of all, <laughs> just Lord. say no to Chapter Eleven, folks. 
Chapter 11 is garbage. Bankruptcy. I love Final Fantasy, but Chapter 11 is garbage. Um, but outside of that, I continue to just have a really strange relationship with this game. I'm playing it with my daughter. We really adored Remake. And nothing happens in this game. It's all character <laughs> stories. It's all background. I've played it for 70 or 80 hours now. And you can summarize what I have done in maybe a couple of sentences. Now, that being said... It's got tremendous art and tremendous music and a really cool battle system that unfortunately just doesn't decide to tell a story because they've made a 100-hour video game out of this really small chunk of the original RPG. And this goes to that kind of bloat goat conversation we have so often, which is that just raw, raw time <laughs> is not actually an asset for a game or any other piece of media. You have to be having fun. You have to be engaged in what you're doing. And I understand that as a not so mature industry and certainly an industry that is uh, invested in by younger people all, very often that that kind of hours per dollar calculation became one of the metrics for video games. But there are so many things in Rebirth that happen that don't make sense, that aren't really very fun, that just elongate sections and sequences in this game that I really wish that they had whatever the equivalent of an editor would be. When you read a, mm -hmm. a, a novel that's over long uh, for their video those. game, because some dev, some dev studios do have like an editor. Type yeah. Job. yeah. Well, and I know that in video gaming, you'd have to probably have that role be earlier, right? You'd want to do that before they make all the assets. For what it's worth, the... I don't think that position exists at any Japanese studio. Well, it's fair. Just based on the scripts I've seen. Right, and <laughs> this isn't just scripts, right? This is whole sequences yeah. where you say, "Yes, I could get that point across in a in a four room dungeon." Instead, it's four levels, and each level has ten rooms. I mean, it's that kind of thing in Rebirth. And I wish I liked it more because I I love Final Fantasy. I love Final Fantasy VII. And in the most surprising turn for me in the last two years, I am replaying Final Fantasy XVI at the same time, and I'm enjoying the experience in XVI vastly more than Rebirth. Like there are are sequences that I've played in Rebirth that I was actively not having fun. Like I'm making fun of the game with my daughter uh, when it's doing something ridiculous and I'm just not enjoying the experience. And I know I would have dropped off this thing if I weren't having the, the family fun time with Rebirth. And that makes me sad. But Put it on the box quote, I was actively not having fun, Richard Hope. <laughs> well, I wish I were having more fun with it because I'm going to get to the end of this and be like, there's, there's many good sequences. There's a lot of good things in there. But if you put 10 good things in 100 hours, it's not going to outweigh all the bad times I had. Yeah. Sounds like you don't like Rebirth. I still have not gotten... I, I did a completionist run of uh, Grasslands. Is that what it's called? The opening area? The first area. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And then I have not played it since. So got to get back to it eventually. It's Played just a lot funny of to me, games. right? Because it's like there, you can make open world games like this. I think Infinite Wealth does it better. I think Xenoblade Chronicles does it better. And this is the first Final Fantasy that does it. I actually think it gets whatever the opposite of a Final Fantasy tax would be in terms of reviews. Like it gets a little bit more credit because it is so anime and arch and a little bit unexpected for this kind of game to be so open world. And I just don't think it works. I just do not think it works for having a game with momentum. And I know people are connecting with it in certain respects. And I'm glad for them. I don't complain about anybody, including Season Gaming's 9.5 that I know Alex wrote, uh, because I can see how you get there if it's connecting with you in some way that it's not with me, because there's so much stuff in there and so much is is really good art, whether it's graphics or music or, or voice acting or otherwise, like it's really high end, but all in the name of nothing. Yeah, it does. It does give me even based on the sec the small section I played, it gives me like uh stretching the hobbit book into three movies vibe you know it's it very got, much like, feels like the hobbit just, just too much shouldn't have done it maybe maybe mm. a duology people really want to make their trilogies <laughs> they really do i don't know what it is about three they really want that trilogy <laughs> well and my position was always that i thought they did a good job fleshing out remake and if you're going to do that for this particular part of final fantasy 7 you could but you have to write more stuff you have to add stuff into what was just a 10 hour sequence in the original game where you walked ab among towns and then you got the game plot started, right? That you have to figure that out, that that's the big thing that you have to solve when you're whiteboarding this thing in some boardroom somewhere. And it's just like they said, nah, we don't, we don't identify that as a problem. 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you know, uh, based on your description, I'm with you. I, I would probably feel very similarly. Um, the crazy thing, as you know, is from a celebratory standpoint, this game is very heavily uh, celebrated. Game of the year so, contender, Hogue. Yeah. Get ready. Get ready. I get that because nominated. one of the main criteria for game of the year is, is big and expensive, right? And rebirth is big and expensive, but when it comes down to it, plot doesn't do anything. It doesn't have any motivation for most of the time that you're playing it. And then the encounter design really leans on what I don't like about role playing games, which is what I call trick bosses, which is you build your party to do certain things. And then this boss is going to immediately counter X, Y, and Z, or it's going to only be hit by magic and then only be hit by physical or whatever. It's doing, it's designed to get you to do weird stuff with your party. And it inevitably takes you to go and die and then restart and then reform all of your strategies with your party and then try again in this kind of puzzle framework that just doesn't match overall what, what I like out of an RPG, which is that kind of strength growth curve and, and more of a, I guess, Dragon Quest style. Uh, but I, that's one reason why Infinite Wealth works so much better for me than Rebirth, which is Based that everything, Quest. everything kind of funnels into the into the power curve in that game in a way that's a lot smarter done than, than Rebirth, in my opinion, right? Everything I say on this or on Twitter is in my opinion, but... <laughs> Pretty much everything is in your opinion. That's, you don't have to say it. That that's That's what doesn't work for me out of this game, and I wish it did because there's a lot of art there. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. Fair. The, the way yeah. you described it in terms of just things that don't work and feel bloated and feel tacked on and slow <coughs> down goat. is like blow goat is is Ragnarok for me. Um, I still think about God of War Ragnarok and get frustrated with how that game just annoyed still? me. Still, yeah, so, who hurt still. you? You have those Ragnarok did. Like, what am I doing? <laughs> you still think I'm of just it. sitting here. I'm, 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 I'm like, uh, yeah, I, I bought this game and I haven't played it yet. And I this does not it. sound like a damn game. Uh, I, I, I love the first one. I like remake. You know, so remake like, is excellent. Going. Yeah, yeah, but I'm like, all right, let's keep going. And then now I'm I'm regretting everything. So <laughs> it's funny because Neo, who you know, our good friend Neo, who's been on the show, of course, um, he yeah. was having some rants about Rebirth the other day on Twitter, and I said, "You sound like Hogue." And then I think he got to chapter 11, which is what you were saying is really yeah. horrible, Hogue. And he's like, what is this? This is terrible. <laughs> I was like, you and Hogue need to have a uh, chapter rant 11. about this game. Do you like throwing boxes at other boxes with the worst interface ever invented? <laughs> We've got you covered. All right, Hogue, <laughs> would you rather replay chapter 11 10 times back to back with no breaks no. or file for <laughs> chapter 11 bankruptcy? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I bill for those filings. You're yeah. you're filing it for you oh, though. It's my personal bankruptcy. Yes. Yes. Well, in general, that's easing up your debt burden. So I think probably file for bankruptcy. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Can't even get him with that question. All right. I'm just gonna well. tell you, chapter eleven, it made me like actively rethink whether I loved Final Fantasy as a series. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh man. man. I'm glad I will probably never make it past the grasslands. That to me, that's the whole game. That's the whole game. Honestly, I think it would have been better for it. Noise. Damn. Speaking of trilogies, you know a trilogy that doesn't waste your time? Go. No. Apollo Justice Ace Attorney. <laughs> there we go, guys. I have been replaying the Ace Attorney series, and the remake that just came out of those three games is phenomenal it's reminded me how much i love these damn games i just finished uh, spirit of justice uh yesterday uh and i'm doing the dlc <laughs> case and man ace attorney is damn good and i they need to make a new one that's where i stand on that one so i've been playing yeah, they are making a new one aren't they? Uh, no, they, haven't announced they haven't announced it uh, there's good so, reason to believe all these re-releases suggest that they might do one in the correct. background there, so yeah. there's there's a ton of evidence one is that uh Ace Attorney games have never sold well. Um, and then they released the uh, Phoenix Wright of Ace Attorney trilogy a couple years ago, and it sold over 2 million copies. Before that release, no Ace Attorney game had broken 1 million copies. Mm. And so that is a very good sign. The Apollo Justice trilogy uh, seems to have sold well. They localized both of the great Ace Attorney Chronicles games into English, which nobody thought they were going to do because they sold so terribly in Japan. 
Um, and a couple years ago, Capcom had its uh, roadmap leaked and there was an Ace Attorney 7 game on their uh, roadmap. However, it was slated for release, I think, in 2021, which obviously never happened. And so mm. that either got delayed or they decided to do the uh, remakes first or whatever. But I, we think it's happening. But if you have not played the Ace Attorney trilogies, the saga, uh, you should play it. Damn, do yourself a favor. Best story ever told in games, in my opinion. Whoa, whoa, according to Hogue. I whoa. gotta say, no. in my opinion, every time. No, by the yeah, way, no. best story told in games. <laughs> Name one I better. Love, I you. love Ace Attorney, and they do really good plot twists. Have you and played whatnot, them all? But no, have you played them all? I have not played them all. I'm still in the okay. poker game in the uh, Apollo Justice trilogy. Okay. Oh my god, bro, you haven't even okay. Yeah, have I, I mean, mentioned look. the huge amount of time I've spent in Rebirth? Why would you? <laughs> He's do moving that boxes, Travis. Attorney? He's moving boxes. I'm. I am moving boxes. Then you're too to busy replaying anything. Chapter Eleven ten times and filing for Chapter Eleven bankruptcy. <laughs> no, but I tell you what, I am too busy doing fighting poison pirates in Skull and Bones. Oh, we do need to talk about Skull and Bones. Do we? Oh, yeah. Do we, we really? Do. I'm the only I've, podcast I've, doing it, ain't. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I agree cool with Alex content. guys twice, by the way. <laughs> Miles Edgeworth Investigations. I've played both of them. One of them isn't even localized into English, so you have to play a fan translation on PC. But I did it. Those games are fantastic. You can play Miles Edgeworth Investigations on your phone in English, but you cannot play the sequel because they did not localize it. I agree. Both of those games need to be localized because they're That phenomenal. guy is too edgy. He is edgy. Oh, let, and he's, let me, but it's let worth me pause. it. I need to ask Volkus and Volkus. I was just going to type, but we're going to call this out. Horizon Zero Dawn would like a word, Travis. Oh, Jesus. So, you do what? not think that's the best story in gaming. Th that's please. what I'm confused. I can't tell if you're being please. sarcastic. or That, that no. sounds sarcastic because that, <laughs> there's no way. No way. That's a crazy choice. Um, yeah, uh, I will talk about Skull and Bones. Or Is that what it's called? Skull and Bones? Yeah, it is. Um, I want to call it Sea of Thieves all the time. So good yeah. job, Rare. Skull and Bones. Uh, I reached the end of season one, season pass a while ago. I also reached a point where I had so much money and pieces of eight that I didn't even know what to do with it because I own every item in the game. And then I put me. the I put the game down, and all of my friends abandoned it long before that, so I have no one to play it with. So I'm probably at the end, unless season two really brings me something fresh and and pulls me in. I'm I'm really at the end uh, of my playtime with skull and bones, but I will say I stuck into, I stuck in it. And the reason I did is because I reviewed the game and I really, I wanted to be the guy who could talk about it in an informed way. So I said, I'm going to get through the whole first season. And I did that. So if they ever need me to cover it a year from now, if it gets an expansion, I doubt it'll live that long, but if it ever did, uh, I would, I would be well I equipped. Know, I'm, I'm heartened by my ranking. I'm heartened by mm -hmm. my smuggler ranking in the 70,000s. So it's not yeah. nothing. Got some players. And also the uh, the rankings are based by platform. So I play on Xbox and PC. And so I see myself in two separate leaderboards. Uh, and so I, there are players, but according to Ubisoft, it sold less than, a, it has le fewer than a million players, which is really bad for a Ubisoft game. So yeah. It's yeah. fair. Like I said, don't follow me into any live service game, folks. But I, I really love Skull and Bones. I finally got my smuggling empire up and running. I took on my first <laughs> fort with a friend the other day. Nice. So, you, did you fight a ghost ship? I tried to fight a ghost ship. I died. How'd that go? Did I, the whole poorly. screen turn red? And it, yeah, did you fight the one that duplicates itself? Does the whole? Uh, it, it warps disappears? around. But I is that okay. duplicating? No, there's a there's a harder version of it that not only warps but also creates clones of itself, and it's I pretty challenging. That one's pretty cool. Um, game is better than a lot of people think, but I do still stand by my seven out of 10, even having played it like quite a bit now and gotten through an entire season. Uh, it has a lot of room to grow. And I think more importantly, it really has not struck a chord or found an audience with the, the game community. And I, I think it's probably just one of those games that's destined to, to go the way of the Dodo. Unfortunately, that is why I'm playing it so much now. Noise. Yeah, I will be yeah. happy to say, like, hey, I actually played that game before it was gone. That's kind of a nice. <laughs> I think that's how I'm feeling about Suicide Squad. Um, still Suicide enjoying it. Squad. Unlike yeah, Joker. so I was all up for the season one, Ains, because you you actually texted us and said it's it's Suicide Squad day. 
So <laughs> what happened? What do you mean? Well, I don't know what you mean. What happened? <laughs> well, I jumped into season one die. and there's nothing there. What do you mean there's not? I don't know. People know who haven't beaten the campaign, there's nothing there. Yeah, I don't know what to do with that comment. Um, like season, it's a continuation of the game. So, yeah. Do, I mean, do you guys remember? You guys discovered the discrepancy, though, is that he hasn't beaten the campaign. And you oh, have. yeah. For I mean, him, if you there haven't, was nothing to do. Yeah. Yeah. It, the whole kind of world opens up. All the end game stuff opens up once you beat the game. Hogue. It's a, it's a, it's a looter shooter. I mean, Season, it's like Diablo. It's like saying, you know, you're going to go in and do end game stuff. Now, when wait a you're minute. On Diablo, two. every season, I get a little crappy story and it makes me happy. <laughs> Diablo, Diablo, you actually don't need to beat the campaign to enjoy the seasons. That is true. No, but I mean, like looter shooters in general, you're going to beat the core game before you start doing the continuation stuff. You guys are both right. <laughs> you're just two different players anyway that's anyway, really all uh, it is yeah so, uh, suicide squad yeah i mean um it, it still has gaps of course right like they it needs some larger pva pve activities uh there is not any big story continuation in season one absolutely not um you know there's still plenty of gaps like that but um there's a lot of new loot and builds uh joker is awesome uh and you can unlock him it for free awesome. which i think is cool um you know you do have to play to level 35 in the season leveling thing which is free it's not the battle pass you can do it all for free um but his like the the effort put into him is really cool you get this kind of cool cut scene when you do unlock him and he gets back to the base and with the characters and stuff um so you know enjoying it it's not revolutionary by any stretch of the imagination but it's just more content in a game i find fun um, yeah which is pretty much it I oh. wish it did more for me. I, I thought it would have a little bit more story with the multiple dimensions and things. And I thought that the way they had presented it, like the way that they had done their dev documentaries and their videos showing what the the plan was, suggested more of that narrative advancement than, than apparently is in there. Yeah, I agree. I think, um, I think it's going to be an interesting conversation to have, and we'll see how long the game lasts and how they follow through with the seasons because there's a lot of stuff that's been kind of leaked about it. Um, it's going to be an interesting conversation when it comes to its end point to, to reflect on that because um, I think they made some poor choices with the way they positioned this game. Um, but that's a whole other topic I don't feel like diving into at the moment. Sure, I still so. have not played this game. So I really hope that the game is around at the end of the year when I do my catch up. Well, be I mean, they already out. have four seasons planned out. I think they'll follow through on those. There's some other stuff that's kind of been um, data mined, you know, that's that's in there. So did they sell a year pass? I mean, have they committed to four seasons. I think I they did. Right? I don't know off the top of my head. I know I there was a hundred and ten dollar version. So I hope that that included a, a year of seasons. Yeah. That well, you see the right. problem, right, is if your game doesn't take off and you sell those early, you get this issue. That's happened uh, before. Yeah. They've had to do like refunds and stuff. Someone reminded me, or I think it was Miles posted the other day that there's a uh, a character pass for Redfall. I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. I'm supposed to be adding new main playable characters to Redfall. But that Alex game's reports. like a year old. They aren't added yet. Nope. Alex Alex reports only the first season is included in the one hundred dollar version, which is horrifying. Uh, it's not just no. the first season. No, you get a uh, you get a credit to use it on any season. You don't have to. Use oh, it interesting. On that's right. Yeah, you got that. That's what that's what I wound up using. Right. So I had like a like no, a pass. Uh, yeah, and and the, the, they kind of broke it out like they do in some other games now, where there's a battle pass, right, where it's got free and paid tracks, right, um, and you earn you actually earn more credits in the battle pass back than it costs, which is nice. That's um, the model but you don't I like. have. But it also has this season leveling, which unlocks other stuff, and all that's free and built into the season. So, there. I mean, like I said, there's some good stuff in there from a live service perspective. I think uh, it's pretty good. But, yeah, I mean, it, we talked about this on SG. It's like the people who are expecting this to be narrative, story-driven comic game, that's just not what it is. And I think part pretty of that is Rocksteady. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think part of that is Rocksteady's fault and the way they position it. Uh, what Hogue was saying is that they I think they tried to play into this was going to have a lot of that and it just doesn't. Well, and the game yeah. does, right? I mean like the game has a surprising amount of narrative cutscenes and things the, the like core that. Game so I just does. assume Yeah. I assume that a season is going to continue a smaller version of that and it doesn't as far as no. I can tell. No, other than the uh cutscene for the Joker, which again is really well done, but other than that, no, it does not. So 
Very funny explanation for how the Joker is in the game, by the way. No. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it it is. Yeah. Um. All right. So I got other games I could talk about. I got some catching up actually, because I haven't been here for how many weeks? A while. I yeah. I don't even know. I only missed one show, but it because we were off last week. Yeah, we because we were off. Yeah. Yeah. South Park Snow Day is a bad game. You shouldn't play it. Uh, Outpost <laughs> Infinity Siege is really cool and janky, kind of a mutt game. You should play it if you've got some extra time and you have a good gaming PC because it has high PC requirements. Uh, I also did a preview of Dune Awakening, the MMO survival game. If you're into Dune, that game looks really, really cool. Probably the coolest thing I saw at GDC. This has been an update from Travis. All right, but I love <laughs> Dune and I don't much care for survival games. <laughs> uh I think you should give it a try. This game looks really dang cool. Uh, All right. I, okay, so j just to elaborate a little bit, like this game has a ton of RPG stuff in it. Like when you're making your character, you do things like select your home world and then your home world determines like your base look. Because if you're from, you know, the Harkonnen home planet, which is like poisonous atmosphere, it like turns your skin pale and makes your hair come off. And so it kind of gives you like a base look and then you customize that further. And it's got character classes and skill trees. Oh, I want a little bit of Bene Gesserit, you know, throw that on there so I can do some some mind manipulation stuff. Is it um, Arrakis only in terms of the play area? It is Arrakis only is the play area, but it has different zones it's not just one map and so there is an area that's protected just like in the books by uh the canyons that uh protects you from the worst of the sandstorms and this is sort of like a pve build your bases and your bases will stick around area that can have like hundreds of players in it and then you can go into the deep desert which is chaotic and once a week a sandstorm comes in and destroys everything there so if you build bases there you know it's not going to be permanent and it's got pvp stuff in it and it's damn cool so uh, all right doesn't sound I, like I, me I at all do, but i love dune i i do want to recommend <laughs> dune awakening i probably the coolest thing i saw at gdc is that when does it come out uh they have not announced i <laughs> So there people have been making fun of me because in my YouTube video, I say that it's coming to early access later this year or something like that. And uh, <laughs> the person who told me that was an employee working on the game, but they had to later update us and say that, that person spoke in error or that maybe isn't happening. So uh, apparently I wasn't supposed to report that in my preview, but somebody <laughs> did say it to me. So I don't know if it's actually <laughs> going to early access this year, but uh, <laughs> I, I officially on the record, nobody said that to me. Okay. All right. Glad. <laughs> so, All right. I, I did um, issue in a correction, even though I was like, I mean, I wrote it down. It, it, they definitely said it. It's in my notes, but you know, whatever. Uh, just so. to expound upon uh snow day real quick for South Park, because uh, I saw the, the widest mix of opinions on this game. Um, I did too. And that was shocking to me because that game's really bad. Like it is like, <laughs> like it is very bad. So I played it with three huge South Park fans and myself, who is also a lifelong South Park fan. We love grungy humor. We love stick of truth. We even really liked uh, uh, the fractured butthole. This okay. game is not that the writing is awful. It has it's 100% toothless as no jokes or even even the stuff you would expect it to have the weird gross out moments and the over the top stuff. None of that. It is literally just a game where four kids have a snowball fight. The combat is really bad. It's got five levels. You can get through it in four hours. Terrible game. Do not play it. Alex played it with me. It sucked. The three people I played it with who are all South Park fans. None of us enjoyed it. We left <laughs> heartbroken playing that game we were like this was awful i cannot believe they put out this game um so yeah don't play it i'm sorry guys i i do I, anybody who has a high score on the game i want to shake them and and ask them like what they're because <laughs> even the reviews i read i was like that's just not true i don't i don't how did you come away from that like a lot of funny moments no it doesn't have any of those it's <laughs> it's very bad I, yeah so don't don't play this game now, now Travis, the last time we had a conversation like that was with the one with the knife that talks to you. And I said, all this humor yeah. sucks. And you I said, I like, so, I mean, couldn't it just be a difference in humor? It, it, for a game I, like don't that? I don't, I, I really don't think so because it, it high on high on life. You could say, I don't like the jokes, but you could say it. Ha you can't say it doesn't have jokes. Oh no. South, South no. Park doesn't, doesn't have those. It, it does like it, it actually doesn't like it is a game where it's the premise is it's a snow day. Let's have a snowball fight. And then there's basically no, there's no dialogue or story 
changes really in there at all. There's like one or two small cutscenes. And so the stuff that you would expect, like from a South Park game of like Cartman being the worst person possible, or like, you know, in the stick of truth, we spelunked inside Mr. Slave. We became a gnome and had to dodge our parents' genitalia. We There's all these like crazy moments that you remember from stick of truth that even if you don't think they're funny, they're very South Park and they're, they're big gross out moments. Yeah. And I'm um, not saying this is the way it should be reviewed, but couldn't it be someone that maybe doesn't love that South Park feeling saying these yeah. are chiller. If, if, that, if that was what the review said of like, Hey, I don't like South Park humor. And so the, the fact that that's not in here is great, but that's not what they're saying. The positive reviews say like, Oh, typical South Park, great jokes. And I'm like, where, like, did we play different games? It's crazy to me. So, okay. Uh, yeah, I, I really cannot not recommend this game enough. Uh, you should not play it. It's a waste of your time and money. Yeah. Fair enough. You heard it here, folks. I was not planning <laughs> on getting it. Yeah, I mean, look, and I'd be the first guy to lean on the side of positive for comedy games. People know that is my tilt. If a game has comedy in it, I, I really uh, give it the benefit of the doubt whenever I can. You do advocate um, for more comedy. I, I like comedy games. There need to be more funny games, but... Uh, South Park Snow Day is not one of them. It's not a funny game and it's not good. It's also just not good to play. Like it's got really floaty, inaccurate combat that gets repetitive in like 10 minutes. So I think the game that has most uh, worked for me, actually, Travis, that you recommended that has made me actually laugh out loud is the Monster Prom series. Great game. Uh, that Great writing. That just has Dating tremendous Sims. writing. Dating uh, Sims have really good writing. I think that's one of the things people don't give them credit for. Presumably because it's the Dan, only Dan game says that all the have. time. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. But yeah, Monster Prom, uh, whatever the second one is, Camping, uh, yep. Road Trip, I think is the third one. Uh, yep. Really good writing. Probably not appropriate oh. for your youngsters, but really good writing. It's funny. It will make you laugh for sure. Yeah, it, it does. Yes. Fair enough. All right. Let's talk about your world exclusive here, Travis. Not the yes. one that Hogue was teasing two weeks ago. <laughs> Um, but the one on <laughs> eternal, so we got that out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> the one on eternal strands, which you got to uh travel to count to yellow brick games, uh, their first uh big game. We've seen their video of it all. now, yeah, yes, and it's uh, it's obviously industry vets, you know, various degrees right. in the studio. Um, but we saw some gameplay from it, we saw a boss battle now, and it's going to be IGN's first for all of April. So, talk to us about this game. Yes, so I can tell you a little bit about it because only two articles are out, but as the month goes on, I'll be able to tell you more and more about it. I saw a tremendous amount of this game. They gave me complete unfettered access to their entire team while I was there. Uh, I got to interview like 10 or 11 different people on their team. I got to you know, walk around their studio. I got to play the game as much as I wanted. Uh, so um, I have a lot to say about this game, but we'll start with the stuff you need to know most importantly about the studio. It is made of, it is an indie studio. They've got maybe 70 or 80 people from what I can tell. And uh, they are 100% comprised of uh, vets from the industry who worked on AAA games. Like that's their entire team, right? And so they've got uh, some people from Bioware. They've got some people from EA. They've got a ton of people from Ubisoft. Their studio is located in Quebec City, Canada. So if you know anything about the Canadian games industry, that shouldn't be surprising to you that a lot of them came from Ubisoft. Um, they also have some really interesting people working on their art team, including uh, the artist who originally designed uh, the face for Asterion for Baldur's Gate 3. So if you the like... Art looks uh, cool. Yeah, if you like Asterion's, uh, it reminded uh, me. Not things. to interrupt you, sorry, Travis. Yeah. It reminded me a lot of Immortals. Uh, it does um, have a look like I, a, I saw some people bit. saying that. I don't know that I agree. I think the art style is distinct enough, and it has very little in common from a gameplay perspective. Okay, uh, from Immortals. Uh, but I, but I get the the look of you know your your. I, I get why people are saying that at first glance, but that didn't. Yeah. Having having played the game almost immediately after seeing it. Uh, that didn't that that uh, comparison didn't enter my mind at all. Okay. And I, did I, play, I, I play I played all of Immortals, by the way. Um, I have to put so. this in professional terms. It's very colorful and sparkly. It is <laughs> colorful and sparkly. Uh, so some people have commented on the uh, art style being kind of it is it is a little trendy right now for games to look that way. And that was one of the things I told them when I was there is they were like, hey, we want to talk about our art style a lot. And I said, I love your art style, but I think a lot of games try to look like this today. So let's talk about the gameplay. 
Uh, and I think the gameplay is the thing that uh, interests me the most. Uh, they also do some really interesting, like uh, if you guys played Hades, they're a big fan of mm -hmm. super giant games. And so okay. they have they have like a social element to their game where you're meeting and advancing kind of invisible social links with your companions. And it does that, uh, you know, the the animation. Uh, what do you what do you call it? The um, the portraits that pop up with the text underneath that's yes, kind of got yes, like yes, a little yes. bit of a little bit of a uh of a visual novel kind of aspect to it which we haven't really uh, shown a lot of that yet uh, or any of it at ign first but you can see a screenshot that a lot of people caught on their uh steam uh wish list posting uh their steam page so um yeah th there's that to talk about but um yeah to, to to give a summary of the game itself it is an action adventure it is not an RPG, despite uh, being from a lot of people who worked on RPGs. So uh, if you were expecting uh, Mike Laidlaw to get back up to his old tricks uh, from his Bioware days, uh, he is in certain ways, but it is not that type of game where you have a party and you're running around uh, completing, you are boxes. completing quests. Uh, Throwing boxes. Throwing, Throwing boxes. boxes. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, let's just say it's not the, it's not the same type of... Uh, Deci tough decisions based rpg you do make some decisions which we'll talk about uh in future weeks but not not the same uh standard of of like a an open world rpg or whatever uh but the game is an action adventure where primarily you're running around fighting things it's very combat heavy you are specifically fighting a lot of large bosses that roam the world there are nine of them throughout the world and they kind of uh spawn in different regions and then roam and then you can choose to engage with them or not and so then colossuses in, colossuses correct but it has more of i would i would say it's kind of shadow colossus meets mega man because like mega man there's nine yeah. bosses and every time you kill one you get a power from them uh so it has a very like direct kind of line to the mega man series sure um and the build i was playing on primarily i had been given all of the powers right at the outset but at the beginning uh on a normal playthrough you have very low power and you're kind of making do with what you the, what, what you, with what you have and then over time you gain abilities that let you manipulate the environment in a bunch of different ways first there's the thermodynamic layer which allows you to do things like cast fire and things get hotter and things catch on fire when you cast fire and then you can do ice which does the opposite effect and because it uses unreal 5 it actually has some unique tech where uh, you casting fire actually changes the temperature of the environment around you uh, and it, it allows like the world to be affected by that. And so you casting fire makes boxes of air, invisible boxes of air that are in the environment kind of contribute to the overall heat of the area. And then different things happen where you can affect the world or maybe, you know, if you're casting a bunch of ice on a guy, his armor will eventually get so cold that it becomes brittle and then you'll be able to cleave it off, which you normally wouldn't be able to do if it were hot or under normal conditions. And so it has some really interesting stuff uh, for that. And then you also have telekinetic powers so you can throw boxes as somebody pointed out, uh, <laughs> or in this case, you can basically like take off pieces of the environment, uh, and throw things at them. Uh, but, uh, we're going to have some other pieces this week, some interviews and stuff that go into the tech and also go into the power engine that allows you to kind of use physics to manipulate the environment and combine powers to pull off interesting tricks and stuff. A lot of that stuff I can't really get into, uh, but sure. the content we have so far is basically the announcement, the reveal trailer uh, that came alongside the announcement, and then a uh, footage and interview of a boss fight. And I also wrote a written preview of that boss fight that you can only see if you go to the article version. So if you saw the YouTube video where it was kind of formatted like a dev diary, uh, the uh, written version is completely different. It's me talking about my time fighting this boss and some interesting things I noticed. Um, so uh, will it run at 60 fps they have not announced that the game is uh over a year out but it is an alpha state and i was playing on a pc that was running it at 60 frames per second uh, but i don't know if that's their target or anything um mm. and then uh yeah the uh it, you know it's a smaller game it's like 25 30 hours was what they estimated um in an adventure game that's primarily based on combat and having fun with powers and doing stupid tricks and stuff like that um, but it, yeah, it's, it's very unique and, and interesting and I'm excited to share more and you can watch nice. me fight a giant, uh, blacksmith with a big flaming ha hammer. Uh, it looks the, really the, cool and yeah, different. It's, cool. it, it's very yeah. different, which is what I'm excited about. It's just not, it combines a lot of different things that I haven't seen in the same place, shadow Colossus and like 
Hades kind of social links, visual novel stuff. And then some very light RPG mechanics. They, I think they had originally described themselves as an RPG and then moved away that as the game developed. Um, and then the way that's fascinating that you credit Hades with that, because I, I tend to think of it as a harvest moon farming sim kind of game. The reason I credit Hades is because that's specifically what the devs, uh, cited as their inspiration. So they're a big fan of super giant and that's what they, they were like, yeah, we like that. And they also really like monster hunter. So they cite that as well. And you can kind of see the Mm. inspiration there. Um, and so it's interesting. Yeah. Alex says, feels like it'll give us what the terrible pray for the gods didn't. I, I sure hope so. Um, uh, my problem with pray for the gods was the unfortunate mixture of shadow Colossus and survival mechanics where like you have to worry about your cold and heat temperature and you're starving. All that the drives time. me nuts. But that was just a really weird, weird combination of things that I think didn't jive. It was not a peanut butter and jelly situation. Um, Did you so, say 80 people for, for a company without any releases? Yeah. Correct. Yeah, they're pretty big. Uh, and the reason they have so many people is because they had a publisher for this game. A publisher. Can I ask, did you get a with, did you get a notion of what the funding was? Yeah, so they had some funding uh, and a publisher in private division. However, for those who are industry insiders, uh, you probably know private division's not doing great right now. And uh, they had to let go of a lot of their projects, including this one. So they actually don't have a publisher. They're self-publishing. That was a surprise. I think they found that out like right before GDC. So they are, Yikes. they are self-publishing their game suddenly. Uh, so mm. yeah. Well, I hope it does well for them. It sounds like an interesting project. We, we always, we have this conversation from time to time about wanting to see interesting ideas and new IPs. Yeah. And so, you know, with something like this, I just hope it does well because I keep getting flashbacks of Immortals of Avium, which New IP, big studio, big project, and you know they're and it's real crushed. good, folks. Give it a try. It's good. It's yeah, good. it's yeah. on PS Plus right now, so give it a shot. But I mean, they've already let go over forty five percent of their studio, which is just you know it's sad, disappointing to hear. Yeah, this is the so kind I would, of, I would, these are the stories I love, right? These are these are the people betting their houses on these kinds. Yeah, of things. yeah, take a risk. Yeah, it's got yeah. some really cool people involved in the studio, um, and we're gonna have a story about the studio this week, which I think some will. Uh, be pretty heartwarming to some of you because they have a very interesting story for their studio. So we're going to tell that this week. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I, I really hope this game succeeds right now. The feedback we're seeing from IGN first, just on the first week is uh, everybody who sees this game seems to really be impressed with it. Uh, we're just having trouble reaching people, you know, and when you have the biggest uh, media platform in the world, you still can't control what clicks with your audience and what people are clicking on. And in this case, I think uh, the people who are clicking on it are really liking it, but we're just not, uh, I don't think we're reaching like as, as many people as we want to. So please share these articles and sure. uh, get the conversation talked about them because uh, I just think we need a, uh, we need to get as many eyeballs on the stuff as we can. Cause everybody who sees it is interested, but we're just, um, you know, sometimes it can be kind of depressing when you see, the uh, analytics on IGN and you realize that, you know, a lot of times if it isn't a triple a call of duty, Elden ring situation, people don't click on it nearly as much. Uh, and that is, that is certainly true. So it's hard to make new IPs and indie games. Um, I'm actually not sure I would even want yeah. the information you have about the, the click tendencies of the gaming audience, Travis. I don't think you <laughs> no. would. I don't think no. you would because it, it can be pretty depressing when you're like, Oh yeah. Like, you know, we've got a ton of traffic and we've got this huge gaming community and here are the things that they actually care about. And as it turns out, it is not new IPs and it is not indie games. Well, you, uh, you saw the study that came yeah. out, right? That 60% of gaming time is spent on games that are seven years or older. I did like see in the that. Industry yeah. right now. It's very interesting. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sure people I would just like to correct that games. headline yeah. and say yeah. that it's games that released seven or more years ago. Saying sure. a game is seven or years older sounds really wrong for what we're talking about are essentially oh, that's interesting. games. In the live service yeah. world, yes, that's fair. Right. Well, I mean, like if you go and turn on Fortnite right now, it's not the game that it was seven years ago. No, that's what I said. Yeah, it's fair. Yeah. Or Apex or Siege or any of those games that are up. Fair there. correction, yeah. but I, I still think it is worth I mean, the the gaming habits of people are changing pretty dr- drastically. I think some people are afraid of that. Uh I doesn't particularly scare me. Um, but I but I I get why people it is different. It's different and and that different means that you don't know what the the end result's going to be the industry is so. going through rapid changes and it freaks people out that's normal it's yep. normal to get freaked out by rapid changes folks but it doesn't mean they're Always. all bad it doesn't mean they're all yep. bad and i i think uh that's a statement that could be used in many ways right now <laughs> yeah it's true <laughs> so well, very cool travis oh sorry Hope. 
Oh no, I was just I was gonna make a joke. I was gonna say Kansas City, home of the Chiefs, right? <laughs> for now. Um yeah, for now. <laughs> that was a joke. T- <laughs> 25 25 billion in assets isn't enough, you know what I mean? You got to keep got to keep taking more. I'm not going to um, agree you know? with you at all. It's a nonprofit. We got to be profitable above all else. Isn't that what nonprofits are for? <laughs> exactly. Well, first yeah. of all, that's why the legal terminology is usually not for profit and not nonprofit because mm-hmm. you're just not making profit for equity holders. It doesn't mean that you have to avoid all existences of profit, of but we don't need to get into that either. Yeah, yeah. That was the we joke, that. Oak. <laughs> that was the joke. Yeah. That was the joke. Uh, Shush says, I wonder if it's similar to Prince of Persia 2008. This was and about it, Eternal um, Strands. I don't think so. I think it it really combines a few things. If I, but My elevator pitch would be it is Shadow of Colossus or Monster like Hunter, Hunter Wild meets Tears no. of the Kingdom, actually. Not yeah, Breath I mean, of the Wild. Fine. And the reason Tears of the Kingdom, not because of the open world or the exploration, or it really has very few similarities with Tears of the Kingdom. But the one I thing it physics. does have is the physics manipulating powers. And so it kind of takes those physics manipulating powers and it combines it with a combat heavy adv- action adventure game. And so, whereas in Tears of the Kingdom, you're using your powers to solve puzzles or to get from point A to point B by creating like a raft out of wood or whatever. In this game, you're just using your powers to fight big monsters and go on like a kind of a hack and slash adventure where you're shooting cool. flames and freezing things and using telekine- telekinesis and stuff like that. So um, it, it really is like a, what if we took the idea of having fun and creativity with powers and we applied it to like an action game that incorporated like massive bosses and they're doing some really cool stuff with unreal engine five, which we'll be talking about on Tuesday. All okay. right. I will check it awesome. out. Yeah. Love to hear it, man. That's, that's really cool. Glad you got to do that. Uh, happy to share it out. Um, yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, game fire. Now we know says, we're flying to Quebec. Yeah, I did. Uh, by the way, I do have a, I do, I, Yeah, no, I do have a. Uh, I do have a, uh, cor- a correction. I did. I think I set, stated previously uh, that we were going to do two IGN firsts in a row. That I was going to be responsible for April and May. The you May did. IGN first game was delayed. I think seven months or eight months. Uh, mm. And so that IGN first is now. Uh, not happening until fall or pretty late in the game, and and we'll see uh, how that goes. I'm still planning to cover it, but uh, uh, we we are currently moving our calendars around because games get delayed, and that means sometimes when you're covering games, your coverage gets delayed. So sure, sure, okay. <clears throat> um, Gamefire member comment says waiting for Hellblade two previews and the new Gears talk. Yeah. So, Let's go ahead and get to that next topic. So yeah, we got the uh, official previews of Hellblade two this week. Um, I've read through some of them, check some of this stuff out. Of course, I, I, I want to mostly go in dark on Hellblade two. Um, but one day hear what people were saying. I read IGNs, I read uh, a few others, um, but sounding really, really impressive. Um, I, I get a lot of, you know, if you enjoyed Hellblade one, obviously you're going to enjoy Hellblade two. looks like they've upped the game a lot, especially in the combat area, which I'm happy to hear. I was surprised um, by the refocusing on one-on-one combat. That was not a, that I would not have guessed that. Yeah. No, and I, I wonder if it's because it's that kind of over-the-shoulder, intimate, kind of very visceral, for lack of a better word, combat they're going for. I don't really know. Brutal, maybe is a good word. But um, yeah, same thing. But um, I've I've liked what I've read. It's kind of what I was hoping to get out of Hellblade 2, a tight, you know, 10-hour, psychotic, dark, crazy adventure or continuation that's my sort of thing let's do it i'm in i think you mean psychological and not psychotic right (laughs) yes i did thank you yeah psychological um but uh some of the technology reading about what they're doing with unreal 5 is really interesting you know doubling down on kind of the uh um her kind of schizophrenic you know tendencies and and what's going on on the screen and the binaural audio and everything just sounds really really cool i'm super excited about this game have you guys ever done one of those like uh schizophrenia um like uh like i don't know what they're called it's where you like put earbuds in your ears and it like it's supposed to replicate the experience of having schizophrenia like it has like people like talking to you and like shouting like doubts at you and stuff and you can you can like take that and like go out in the world try like go grocery shopping with like this thing in your ear it's really surreal i don't know if you guys ever seen that you can my wife has that uh just normally without you know (laughs) She just, yeah. you're just calling your wife schizophrenic on the show bro yeah, yeah pretty much wow yeah. that's hardcore 
get to that level of comfort in your relationship, folks. <laughs> <It's just laughs> why schizophrenic straight up to the world. It's crazy. Uh, Vintage Willow said it's called Hearing Voices Training. It's what Thank she you. said. It's one of the most yeah, yeah. important trainings I did. It's crazy. It, it, gives you, it. It, it gives you so I much haven't. empathy for like, you know, if you ever walk down the street and you see somebody like talking to themselves or whatever, or like, like seems like they're having like a, a bad time in life. If you do one of those things, dude, it gives you so much empathy for those people because it's hard to not talk back after a while because they're like mm. taunting you and stuff. And it's like these it's it's like, yeah, it's like you're just not able to control the the voices you're hearing. Uh, it's really mm. frustrating after a while. I, I like Hellblade that. one, but I didn't love it. So a sequel is fine. I'm okay. I, I'm hopeful that it'll be enjoyable. But so I, I really thought they had uh, run out of ideas by the end of the first one. To mm. me, a game that I liked but didn't love, which I would describe Hellblade as probably like a seven for me, right? Okay. Is exactly the type of game I want to see sequels on. Because a game that's like a 10 out of 10, I feel like the only way you can go is down. And you know, at that point you've kind of reached it. But I like to see these ideas that were good premises that maybe if they had more money and more time or whatever, they could take it to the next level and see like, what is a nine out of 10 version of that idea? So I hope they do really well. I'm, I love that uh, argument. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like that idea I, too. I, I am. I am certainly uh, heartened by the preview stuff I've seen, but uh, like Ains, I'm sort of keeping it blind on this one. Cause I really am looking forward to just enjoying this. I don't think I'm going to be involved in any of its coverage, which is a nice change for me. Um, so I, I'm, I'm excited to see if they can pull it off, but again, they got a lot of chips riding on this, man. They've shown it for like six years to us. And so I, that for a I long think time. I, I, I do Stay think in that sentence, you're talking about Ninja theory or Microsoft, Microsoft. Okay. I, I just think, you know, you put that much pressure on a game. It's kind of like with PlayStation showing no man's sky all the time and like putting all this expectation on it. You kind of, you play against yourself a little bit if you don't then deliver. Um, and so Maybe it'll be a cuphead and it will deliver and be amazing. Maybe it won't. Cuphead. That's the fun. That's the fun. Um, I like, well, I like cuphead, actually. Um, yeah. yeah. And so, that was one of those games that had a lot of pressure because they showed it so much. And then it came out and it was like, oh, yeah, it is as good as it looked. Fantastic. Oh, yeah, it is. It's a pity their method requires them to spend 10 years making a game. But... <laughs> it is a pity that it takes long, but boy, do the results yeah. matter, right? It's great. Um, yeah. Dan, where were you on Hellblade? I can't remember. Do you care for this? About the same as Hogue, probably. I mean, I, I thought it was good, you know, but I mean, it wasn't mm -hmm. like, you know, it was, it was, it was a cool, you know, neat little mechanic with the headphone wearing, and uh, I didn't really care for the combat, uh, as you know, there wasn't a whole lot in there anyway. The alignment uh, puzzles are pretty brutal. It didn't yeah. strike me as special when I played it, right? It wasn't one right. that really jumped out at me. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, I understand where people. I mean, I kind of understand where how people would see it that way, and you know, they call it brilliant and masterpiece, and yeah. But for me, it was just like—I mean, the performances. It was all right. That's that, that's pretty special. The performances yeah. in the game. I thought they had done better with Heavenly Blade, honestly. Well, there you go. I'm not sure that sentence right. has been said before. <laughs> <laughs> the performance is really good. It had a really interesting idea. I'd never really seen that kind of unique in your own head audio design stuff. So I just think it had like a kernel of like, that's interesting. And that's really all you need. If you know, like first for a sequel, I think if they can run with that idea, that I like that work. argument, Travis, I'm just telling you, as I experienced it, that was another game I played. Yeah. yeah it was gotcha. hard to get into and continue. You know, it's, I had to start it over like two or three times just to oh really get all the way through it. Yeah. I think I started it on the PlayStation. I ended up finishing it on Xbox eventually. Mm. Well, it's so very it's samey all the way through, right? And, and one yeah, hope I would have is. is the two is not. Maybe yeah, it it, it, it does out. drag a little bit, and I will say I like that it was short because I think Hellblade one was one I beat in like a single set sitting. I was just like, oh, it's yeah, pretty got, short generally. You got a day, yeah. I'm just gonna power through it. But I think towards the end they start to overstay their welcome, and so this being a shorter game that excites me, makes me think maybe you know if it just respects your time and just crushes it. Sometimes those are the best types of games. Kind of reminds me of like Inside right like a really Very brief good. game but like that it just hits so hard and it doesn't overstay its welcome and sometimes that's the best thing you could do a little nightmare i can't tell you out. i can't tell you how many games i've reviewed that you know at the 10 hour mark i'm thinking okay this is maybe like a six it's kind of okay but then the game is like 40 hours and by the 40th <laughs> hour i'm like no this game's bad this is a four out of ten because games do get worse if they make you repeat the same loop over and over again without any sort of like 
changing of the game yeah. or, yeah, yeah. you know, it's just like eating plain quinoa for three meals a day for two weeks. It's just the more, the more you're forced to do it, the worse it gets for you. And so the hell is quinoa? Sometimes... what is Whoa. quinoa? What? Whoa. Oh, wait, quinoa? I actually, remember... Dan, you know what? I know the problem. You know what better quinoa. as quinoa? Quinoa? <laughs> quinoa? No? Quinoa? Oh my God. He doesn't know what quinoa is. I thought you were being sarcastic. This is a reverse San Francisco right here. This is what we call that. <laughs> Kansas is not taking the blame for this one. <laughs> uh, I think I think it is, dude. You got a true son of Kansas here who doesn't know what quinoa is. I I dare you to try to find one person in San Francisco who doesn't know about quinoa. I dare it's a you. It's grain, Dan. I think. It's a seed. He's looking. It's he's looking it up. Seed. He found it is a seed. I believe it is a seed. Yeah. It is a seed. Eat it's more. Right. It's not terrible. It's, quinoa is like mushrooms. Great. It's as good as the quinoa, person like cooking it. It's as good as the person cooking it, right? It doesn't have yeah. like it is bland if you just eat it plain. But well, you and what you're, you're blending going, it into, yeah, yeah, dude. If you've ever made yeah. like uh, tacos that incorporated or like a quesadilla, quinoa can be great. Man. <laughs> the first video is how I make quinoa taste time ten, ten times better. All right. Yeah, I mean, you—that's what you great, have man. to. It, it's sort of—it's a canvas for you to put flavor into. It's the one of the uh, little little facts for you. It's one of the few uh, non meats that has a full range of amino acids. So there you go. It's like tofu, right? It's like it's whatever it tastes like. It's whatever it's with. <laughs> yeah, but I would say yeah, but I mean, tofu sucks. I I I, do, I tend to agree with that. I think tofu is less good at at the thing it tries to accomplish. It also just has a really nice texture. I'm getting it. This is becoming food cast. Ains, let's start cooking again. We, we, we always our, do the food cast at some point. Gotta, gotta get our show down, bro. It took us two <laughs> hours. We, we lasted a long time for this food cast. That's true. We held out. We held out on this one. Um, anyway, it's good, Dan. It's healthy. Can you know it's very good for you? Eat more of it. Yeah. Can you find it in a McDonald's and or a barbecue joint? Because... There's probably McDonald's somewhere that has quinoa. Yeah. Actually, yeah. You know what? I've been to places, barbecue places that have quinoa. I was going to say, it. there's probably uh, some barbecue in places like San Francisco that have yes, quinoa. Yes, that's what it looks like to me. <laughs> yeah, I hate to break, but look, some, some, some stereotypes are true. Californians love quinoa, just like we like our yoga hot. We love that. You know, you got you to gotta do it. Just to be clear, Dan, all I was trying to establish is that quinoa is not the scooped bagel of the world it is you not know, really it is, is out not, there it is not that no 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 it scoop exists. bagel just right. to be clear I'll check scoop it out. bagel even as a san franciscan scoop bagel is offensive to me and the people who do it are weird just to be clear <laughs> it's not clear, normal yes. it's not normal san francisco stuff most of most san franciscans look at scoop bagels and go why why would you do that so, kelly c in our chat says panera has it i believe that that sounds that's right probably, I like panera. That's probably right yeah Hmm. Yeah, it's good. Uh, Underrated. gracefully and gracefully insane. Yeah, Ains is one of the few that is fully natured protein. That's right. She knows what talking about. Do I look like somebody who is looking at my natured protein? I don't know. Let's, <laughs> take, a look, let's take a look at that lower half body Dan Cam. <laughs> oh, he's throwing it back in a circle. Good job. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> All right. Well, to get Travis going again because uh, he's ranted about this before. I'm going to bring up the fact that it obviously came out that with the type of game it is and the technology it's pushing, Hellblade 2 is 30 FPS on Series X. And as always, when a game, a big game is 30 FPS, we have to hear about it and argue about it. So, uh, Travis, get him. Yeah, uh, if you've ever played a <laughs> game that is not a first-person Twitch shooter, you have already realized that 60 FPS is certainly not a necessity in all games. If you want 60 FPS and you're that type of person, I'm sure they will have an option for you on PC. If not, uh, I think you're play it and then tell me if the frame rate uh, scares you. I, I fully believe that almost all of the people who scream online about frame rate are doing so when they hear the number before playing the game and then they either don't play the game because they object to it morally for some reason but yes morally. the frame rate fascists are out <laughs> in true form and they can go take a hike because you suck morally is funny actually i really like that. <laughs> so i will say what i always say on this topic which is that 60 is better 120 is better than 60 higher numbers are better here but 30 is in no way a deal breaker but i will also add that there are games that say that they're at 30 that are really targeting 30 that are fluctuating all the all over the place below 30 and that's not fun there are ways to implement even 30 frames that aren't great 
It really does depend on a game by game basis as to how that's been implemented. I tend to like mine with a little bit more motion blur added than some others do. That's really up to you. It's going to be reasonable minds may differ. Your mileage may vary. But overall, it would be better if it were 60. It's not 60. And the thing that people don't realize about these consoles or even PCs at some level is that the game developers can always raise the sparkles up to whatever level they want and lower the frame rate as part of the payment for the economics there. And while we got a lot of 60 frames per second games on the transition between generations, developers are very often going to pick more sparkles in those frames because they make better screenshots and they sell more games for them. So a lot of companies have decided to essentially aim their graphics budget at a 30 frames per second level rather than a 60 frames per second level because a lot of people, even though you hear about it online, don't necessarily feel the difference or, or don't think they feel the difference and the screenshots will always look worse like you see on a VR game or something like that. And I know this from having talked with people at Insomniac that used to have a 60 frames per second requirement back if, if you think about like the PlayStation 2 Ratchet and Clank days. Mm -hmm. And this is what they determined was that people were saying the graphics were bad and that they weren't really getting the extra sales they thought they would for the 60 frames per second performance. And, and then they moved slowly to the, the areas that they got to uh, in the later PlayStation eras with 30 frames on Ratchet. And then I think now it's 40 with the VRR. With the VRR, but, yeah. But it's always this kind of spectrum. It really is a graphics budget that you can pick whatever whatever technology you've got in your box or your PC and say it can do this many sparkles at 30 frames per second and it's it's far fewer for 60 frames and deciding what it is that you want to sell. Yeah. I, I, I Clearly, I've said this before, I would absolutely uh, prefer 60. Um, 30 does not mean unplayable. Uh, obviously frame pacing and the frame rate consistency is key. Frame blocking. Um, yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. But, uh, you know, again, I, I think there to Hoag's point, there's gotta be expectations of what they're going for here. And that uh, Xbox series X is a $500 and not even $500 anymore console. Right. So it, you have the option to play on a higher end PC. If you want those higher frames, um, whether or not they do a 60 frame mode, I think is always the question and stuff like this. Uh, I think what they've said, obviously, is the way they're pushing the Unreal 5 tech. And from what I hear from some other people who are more technically inclined on kind of engine talk than I am, because it's Unreal 5 uh, is where some of the struggles come uh, in, in pushing the higher frame rate on the lower hardware. It is pretty but new. I I am surprised to your point because you mentioned it, Hogue. I was going to that at least they. I'm surprised they don't have a VRR mode, which we've seen in a lot of these big first party games on the PlayStation side as well, where you can play it in like 40 FPS. We got that in uh, Plague Tale Requiem, if you recall as well. And the it does 40 make VRR a pretty nice. Seems perfect for me. Like I I really can't tell that big of a difference between 60 and 40 with that VRR. With the VRR, yeah. So like that. Yeah, that's it's it's a really shame. Well. So I don't know if that'll be added or what, but you know, I'm, I, I am. Uh, the nice thing is I am reviewing this uh, Hellblade Two, so I'll have the review nice. for SG for us. Um, but I plan on playing it on both Series X and PC just to kind of see how much of an impact it has, and I'll talk about that. But uh, Dan, I know you are usually on the other end of the spectrum. You are a frame rate guy. Frame um, fascist. He's a frame rate fascist, you know, right out there. So uh, Let, what do you see your that armband, baby? Let's see it. What'd you got, baby? <laughs> Pull it out. He's got the FF armband. Yeah, he's got the armband. <laughs> no, here's the thing. You know, it's it's not. I, I'm not saying the games aren't playable in 30 frames. You know what I played a couple of weeks ago? I reinstalled for some reason. Uh, Shadows of Mordor, which I love that game. Mm. Great game. It mm -hmm. runs like ass. Okay, on these new consoles, I'm not sure why they haven't. You know, even Xbox just give me like that frame boost or whatever. Uh, but nothing, you know, it's just, it's just 30 frames and it, it's kind of rough. Cause I mean, that's a, that kind of game, especially really would benefit from a 60 frames. Cause it's, it's very fast paced combat. You got stuff coming at you from every different angle when you get in those big battles and you know, it, it was tough, you know, but I, I kind of sludged through it. Hellblade seems like a game that, you know, 30 frames should be fine with. It's not like a super fast paced game, you know, and I get that kind of stuff. My problem was the marketing my problem was, oh, yeah, the 60 FPS is going to be the standard, Aaron Greenberg. No, it's not. 
All right. We, nobody told me that Unreal 5 was coming out when I bought these two things. Nobody told me that, you know, the devs are going to start <laughs> a, deciding. A big oh, we want to we yeah. sell more games. To be clear, know? it's because they didn't know there were going to be bottlenecks. I'm an Unreal idiot. 5. Yeah. All right. I'm an <laughs> uninformed moron. Here's the problem. I don't know all this garbage about engines and bottlenecks and CPUs and stuff. Yeah. When you tell me and you put it on the box that it says 60 or 120 frames at 8K, that's what I want. That's what I'm kind of expecting. Yeah. We're never going to get that with these consoles. And it pisses me off that that's how we're never going to get it at all. I'm, what I'm saying is the consoles, right. if they're 10 times as strong, you're still going to go to the sparkle level that goes to the minimum acceptable frame rates for the biggest audience. That's yeah. garbage. Well, right? I think, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know that it's garbage, but I get your frustration as a consumer. I think the uh, important thing to know is that when the people made the claims, I do not believe they were making them maliciously. I think they didn't know the same things that you didn't know. I don't think that they knew any more that Unreal Engine 5 was going to come out and have bottlenecks or, you know, create these other problems or whatever. And so, uh, I mean, to be fair, games. there are games that run at 120 FPS, right? Gears 5, I think. There's quite a few that run at yeah. 120, but I, yeah, yeah I, I do get Dan's frustration at the same yeah, Totally, point. 100%. As a consumer, yeah. wanna, no, no problem. I just want a, a, an option, right? Like, I understand with Hellblade 2, you know, I get that. You know, but any more these days, you know, even when there is a 60 FPS option, a lot of times it's janky or, you know, not fully fleshed out. We've seen that a lot. A yeah. lot. You know, and, and that's that's another thing. You know, if you're going to... You know, I'm tired of these games coming out half-assed. You know, and it's not all of them, but I mean, it's it just just finish up what you're going to do. If you're going to wait six months to put in a 60 FPS option, that's not the only thing you can do with those six months, right? There's all this other stuff that can be fixed and and, and, and done and, you know, kind of fine-tuned and stuff, but it's all about money. It's all about hitting that date for these people. Well, also, I, I also think that there, it's a very small audience. I don't think the fascists have as many on their team as they think they do. I think most people don't really care. Like if a game is optimized well, they're just consuming it and they're not really aware of like the specific frame rates. They know when a game feels bad or looks bad, but I don't think that they're as aware as people who are on BitCast or in the comments on YouTube no, who really not. are in there. I think they're just sort of like playing it and having fun and not noticing. And so I think if you can release a 60 FPS patch six months later for the people who care about it, that's probably the right move because the vast majority of players are not going to care. Of course it is. You know, I just yeah, rather I pick have case it, by know, case sure. myself. But I think to give credit to the crazies online, the right way to have that fight is to convince people that 60 is the only acceptable frame rate because the developers are always going to build to the lowest acceptable frame rate. So yeah, essentially like a political eyes. campaign, the fight is to get people to essentially not accept anything less than 60 as commercially sellable. Yeah, I, I don't think that that's the right way to do it because I I err on the side of like developer freedom and they they if they made a game in 30 FPS and they think it feels good, then that's their vision. And I will judge that vision when I get to play it myself. But I just don't know that you can say... You say that, that but, but you're establishing a, a, an actual minimum of, of 30, right? If the developer said, we think... I don't, I don't have a minimum 10, of 30 either. Yeah, I don't. He prefers 4 FPS. I, I think a game I think a game could be good in 4 FPS if that's how the developer designed it to play and there's some sort of vision around that. I would love to see what that game looks like, but I do not I do not put any threshold just because I think uh, in creative pursuit saying, well, here's the rules that you have to play your creative pursuit within is kind of crazy. I just don't I just don't follow that philosophy. So I'm on the opposite end. I will fight those people and say, you probably don't know what you're talking about. But also to your I point, Hogue, I understand they're advocating for something that they care about and they want to see that change in the industry, more power to them. I'm just on the complete opposite side of like creativity is anarchy. You don't know what you're talking about. Let's see what a 30 FPS game can look like in 20 years if it can still be good uh, based on the standards of that day. But uh, well, I really like I the button. Like I really do like performance and quality because it, it directly shows you what you're paying. Right. You can you can go and sure. you can have quality mode. You can play it. You can say, all right, it feels like this, but the light through the sails is more cool in something like Skull and Bones. Right. Like I actually play on quality mode in Skull and Bones, which isn't the biggest deal, but I really like how the, the volumetric lighting or whatever they're doing with the sun works in that game at quality mode that you lose when you're on performance mode. And it, it definitely feels better on performance mode, but I made that selection myself. So. Mm -hmm. I like that button when you get to choose what 
what things that you care about, but I don't have a problem with 30 frames per second, period. And it's clear from at least the trailers for Hellblade 2 that they want to do stuff with facial capture. They want to do things that hopefully we haven't seen before. Uh, and I'm in favor of that. I think where you got most of the fighting was when they said it was for cinematic reasons. I think that one of the messages was we wanted it to be more cinematic, something along those lines, which really is sparkles. Uh, but <laughs> that's where people get upset as they said, well, you can be perfectly cinematic at 60. And you kind of can in video games. I will say, if you go play some games that have their cutscenes change for the for the frame rate that you're at, 60 still feels weird. 60 still feels soap opera in most instances, for me at least. I like that you said sparkles like four or five times this show. I just love to say the word sparkles. I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> but we've learned um, from Mrs. Hogla, who uh, like uh, betrayed your trust, that you don't like quinoa. I don't like quinoa, but I know what it is. <laughs> she says you find she says you find it offensive. Oof. Well, she sometimes Explain subs yourself. in quinoa. He's aggressively right. anti quinoa. Yeah, right. I want to know what the what the issue is because it sounds like a a classic case of maybe somebody cooking it who doesn't know how to make it taste amazing. Well, I don't know why you are insulting my wife's cooking as part of the show, but I didn't know that she was the one cooking quinoa into instead of rice. On I didn't. Occasion. I had. I. I don't know who does the cooking <laughs> in your house. I do the cooking in my house, so I might have been insulting your cooking. You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, why would I make that assumption, Hoke? <laughs> challenge all of your gender roles. Let's do it right like here. Just don't Live on the air. Do we have a Do we have a gender role segment? Let's roll. Let's no, we certainly do not. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, we certainly do not. That's the best answer range you possibly could. It, it's, a, it's, yeah, the same, yeah. it's the same thing as the bloat goat logo. Challenging gender <laughs> rolls. Boom. <laughs> 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 Listen to these four guys challenge gender roles. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh boy. Um, Listen, all right. The one thing. Be fine at 30 frames. I think it'll be fine. It'll oh, be, okay. So, yeah, think, it'll look yeah, great. I, I'm, I'm sure of it. You know, I just, I just, like I said, it's mostly the marketing stuff. It's mostly I feel like you know, you buy a new TV for some of this stuff. You know, you go out. Oh, I get this VRR crap on my TV now. I got to make sure that this does 100. You know, you're 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 in it for two grand. Next thing you know, and then a year later, you start seeing, you know, well, we can't really do that anymore with our games because you know we're pushing for this. And this is kind of the direction we want to go in. I'm like, yeah, you selfish ass devs. Come on. Make it for me. Selfish one time. devs. One time. <laughs> one time. It's, 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 it's more hyperbolic than it is anything else for me. But, you know, it still, dri it still drives me nuts. It still drives me crazy. Just I me tend not. to agree a lot of the time that, that the devs favor certain things that don't give me a lot of bang for my buck sometimes. Ray tracing being one of them. Yeah. And I like having the I'm option to press the so. buttons to turn those yeah. things off. But, yeah, we'll see. Um. One thing that does interest me, just because I like, I'm fascinated by kind of the tech that goes into the games. Because if you think about the uh, performance, and I always forget the main character's name, the real actress uh, from the from Ninja Theory, um, but who played Senua. Um, you know, they we Senua. talked a lot about her performance in the first one and facial expressions and all that stuff, right? In the IGN preview, it says that they did the motion capture for Hellblade One in two days. Um, which is kind of crazy. Um, whereas in part two here, if you don't know, Ninja Theory bought, uh, built an in-house state-of-the-art motion capture studio. Um, and then oh, while developing Hellblade 2, they have done 70 days of motion capture for this game. So they talk about the improvements in like animations and the combat and all this other stuff. I'm just, I'm, I'm excited to see that on screen. Uh, to see how it translates. I think it's good so. to be excited about things that excite you. I mean, I think, I'm not going to take away your hype. I just... I will play it when it comes out, and I'm hoping it's great. Sure. Yeah. yeah. No. 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 Well, I, I. It just it boils down. This is all Digital Foundry's fault. Let's just really put it out there. Then these guys, you know, they they, they make this. You know, you guys zoom in hundred times. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look at this. You know, you can see this too. Other play the grass over I here. Know. And, you know, I don't. Like, I don't up. think that Come there's on. anything wrong. Melina with, Jerkins. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I don't think there's really anything wrong with like Jergens. the consumer pushing for people for devs to optimize their games better, right? Like if you have absolutely no pushback on that, then you let devs sort of get away with, you know, unoptimized games that don't perform well or run well. So I, I think there is a natural balance. I just think some people want it to be a little too far, a little too militant in what they consider the bare minimum for a game to be acceptable, regardless of creative vision or stuff like that. And so 
uh, I, I, I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with, with people pushing the other way though, especially from a consumer perspective, generally speaking, more pixels and frames is better. And I think, uh, you know, everybody wants the games to feel good while you're playing them. Yeah. I mean, so. those are standards, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, about digital foundry. I, I, it's funny, Dan, you mentioned that we were talking in discord about the other day and I said, you know, they, they, they do good work. And I think they set out to do things that were generally meaningful. And of course, now it's uh, sadly a lot of the stuff they do is kind of mountains out of molehill type work. Um, and it's it's kind of frustrating a lot of that stuff because it does. It creates all these narratives around things that really we shouldn't even be talking about. They're not even worth talking yeah. about. Um, yeah. I don't care about the yeah. extra blades of grass. That I can yeah, use. it's just it's like, yeah, they, they were talking like Forza and GT7. I watched that one and they were like zooming in to the trees in the distance. And I'm like, nobody's looking at that while I'm racing nobody's around the track. Looking. Like, listen, everybody in the chat that's like not old, when you get older and your eyesight just start going, you're just going to get so much more clear for you as your eyesight gets worse. <laughs> you're going to be like, why did I care about this stuff for? Because it all looks like a big blurry mess anyway. You know, <laughs> no contact lenses or glasses will fix that. And I wear contacts. It's never going to work. It's just going to be garbage. Nobody cares. And then you can barely hit the buttons in the, you know, how you're supposed to. Hey, it's Dan, Dan you're, you're falling apart, my friend. You're I'm falling, falling apart. apart. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hear this episode has been chaos. <laughs> it sure has. It. This is what happens with the Perfect. four of us get back together. Uh, a couple, couple Perfect. comments to catch up on here. All right, console peasant with the ten uh, euros, uh, just here to show some love. Well, thank you. Hey, we'll take it, whatever what we can all, get. That's what we're all about. Thank you so much. If, yeah, Appreciate if you give us ten bucks, you can show some, you know, a little bit of hate, maybe. I mean, or you know, whatever you want. <laughs> no, don't ten don't bucks, pay bucks. for hate. Don't pay to no, share $10 hate. Ten dollars is ten dollars. The rules of life. <laughs> it's fifty bucks. It's fifty bucks. Fire is hot, and uh, never turn down free food. And also, if she stabs you, it's over. It's four rules of life. You live your rules in your life by those, and you're good to go. That's all you need. I like. Oh, I think we just it. got the talk you're from welcome. Dan. I don't know what's going on in this episode. But I'm just letting it go at this point. You're welcome. Uh, right. Sarnisms. Sarnisms. Yay. The member comment. Dev ambition is like clutter, cats, and gas. It expands to fill the available space. <laughs> That's 30 FPS, but pretty. Yeah. <laughs> clutter, cats, and gas. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. Love it. All right. That can all feel um, good though. That can all feel good. good. <laughs> a couple of things I want to mention about uh upcoming summer. So um a couple of things came out this week. Basically, we knew that Summer Game Fest was June 7th, which is a Friday. Um, and then per the Verge, as of Friday, I believe, or maybe even yesterday, they announced that uh Xbox Showcase is going to be June 9th as on a Sunday, as it always is. Um, and then Ubisoft actually announced that they're going to do their summer thing, uh, which is kind of cool. Ubi Forward on Monday, June 10th. So it almost feels like, you know, we're, it feels like a, you know, mini June 3 sort of week, kind of. June 3. E3. June 3. Uh, June 3. Well call it that. Um, so uh, we're lining up some shows. But as part of the Xbox showcase, what's kind of come out in terms of rumors that are swirling right now, which we see always before these damn shows, is uh, Gears and State of Decay. So uh, yeah. I've got the gear, I've got the gears hat on for a reason. I've been waiting to hear about more gears. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I'm the only gears guy on this panel. No, 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 gears, love gears, <laughs> gears, gears, gears. Put me, put me in the gears. He's like, no, 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 gears, <laughs> gears. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. I would like it. to propose that we call that week June three with the E in June replaced with the number three. There you go. Noise. That's perfect. Nice. All right. That's uh, we'll, we'll, that's going to go with our bloat goat and and whatever else uh, I've got to create now. Challenging oh. gender roles <laughs> segments. <laughs> yeah. What uh, do I think of gears? Yeah, I'm not taking that one, guys. That one's on. Yeah, you. yeah. Gears, okay. gears is great. I recently replayed all the gears with my fiance because she had played none of them and she really loved. How it, dare so. she? I know, right? How dare she indeed? For shame. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of Gears. It's sort of like just a junk food game for me. Um, it is literally the Fast and Furious of games franchises. So I shouldn't of, have been as and surprised I, as I was. I take that Hogue's as a compliment. about to get booted off this panel. Uh, it's a compliment, bro. It is kind of like that. Uh, you, dude, don't talk down on Gears that way, my friend. Come on. Talk Gears is Gears, dumb bro. fun at best, Danes. It, 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 is, it is dumb fun. It should but be it's not, honored it's not to be mentioned in the same fun. breath as Fast and Furious. Oof. Great, wow. terrible you guys great are game, just great you're crapping great all game. over my my ip right now um no gears I, is fantastic 
Uh, I love gears. Um, you know, the, the thing I love about gear, one of the things I love about gears is it, it still comes in that kind of template, like, uh, Xbox has done for a while where you get the single player, you get the narrative, you get the characters, but then you get a multiplayer suite as well, which, you know, I've, I've always wanted out of PlayStation and they did it a little bit with like uncharted and resistance at the time and stuff. But I love that. I'm going to be able to play this game. You know, obviously the campaign is going to, I assume, continue the story of gears five which is going to be interesting because if you finish very gears interesting 5, yeah, yeah you know that there is a choice that you made in that game where a core character dies um and it can be one of two core characters so uh we're going to see how they continue that from a canon perspective um but i'm also excited more importantly i'm more excited because gears 5 multiplayer was good at launch but it was missing what a lot of the core gears fans Kind of loved long term, and it's it's really evolved over the past few years uh, into something. You talking about the multiplayer great. sandbox? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's evolved uh, a lot, and it, it's actually become really, really solid. And I'm just really curious to see uh, what they do with that. The other thing to know about Gears, of course, is that the team uh, at Coalition are like Unreal Engine experts, and from what we should know, they are going to be the ones that really kind of show what UE5 can do um from a technology perspective they'll be the you know they'll be the at the forefront of that so i'm just i'm super excited for more gears man. maybe maybe an unpopular opinion but for i i actually think gears 5 might might be the best gears game uh i i absolutely adore the multiplayer sandbox uh and like yeah you're speed. gonna get skewered for that one yeah not for me I, necessarily but just other and people. i and i love gears 5 like story it. so much uh and i actually think for for like hogue I don't, I don't know what your exposure is to gear story but i think four and five really moved gears in a more serious direction they still have like the goofiness and over the top action but i think the stories they tell and the characters they get a lot better and i would say less one-dimensional than in the your original gears trilogy so i think i've played yeah. about half of four and five five doesn't have a number on it officially right it does it's just, just not removed, gears they removed war. the of war yeah it's okay. gears five it's gears five yeah. yeah uh yeah but gears five i absolutely love the like open hub world thing they did where you're like skiffing around and stopping and doing like little so i was gonna ask about that and, uh, um, i love that some people don't like that they kind of expanded the world gameplay out. Mm -hmm. I liked it personally, um, but I, I think Gears Five, like narratively, is stronger than it gets credit for. Way stronger. Um, it's 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 yeah. yeah I I really really like that game. And uh, a counterpoint: my fiance didn't like the open world stuff because to her it made the game so big that she was like, like uh like it, it felt like over, like uh, overkill to her. Like it was just a little bit too much because she really kind of liked the turn your brain off and just go down single hallways and stuff and i think there is something to be said there's a certain player who just wants that to me it just reminded me a little bit more of like the original gears of war which is one of my favorite ones because it has more of like a <clears throat> that game is almost like a puzzle game i mean every section of the game has like a kind of theme whether it's you dodging the uh what are the bill birds called the krill or whatever the, the bird yeah, things krill, you got around. it yeah, uh, the, the bird things that fly around and staying in, in uh, uh, light and stuff like that. or The Berserker. The, yeah, the Berserker is like a mechanic. Awesome. They, they just, Every section just has like a really cool puzzle. I, I really, really adore the first Gears of War. And I think Gears 5 got the closest to that because of the way it used its little hub worlds. And to me, it didn't feel like bloat. It didn't feel like it was too big. There were just a couple things to do on each map. And I really like that game, man. I think, I think that game is so underrated. I haven't gotten far enough in it to critique it too much. I've just never really liked the storytelling or the world. Ains, mm. throw into the DM me. What, who did you choose at the end? I'm interested to hear. Yeah, well, we'll talk off. Yeah, okay. that's fine. I, um, I, I like, I like I, oh, this is going to be Kate Diaz over Marcus Phoenix. How about that? I'll take Kate wow. over Marcus. Uh, as, a, as a main, you mean? Like yeah, your main, main lead? Yeah. I, I, I really like Kate. I think that Kate over I JD for sure. Over. Yeah. Yeah, yep. I don't know why they made JD the way they made him. They made him kind of like obnoxious. Um, Kate, I, I really like, um, and and the whole thing with her family history and Mira and what's going on there is what they have to dive into in the next one, right? Uh, without kind of spoiling too much, uh, maybe I already did. Um, but I think that Marcus, it, it's kind of like they had a situation with Marcus, like they do with Chief. It's like you try to move away from him in gears, and you just yeah. he's got to be there. 
he is I, I, actually, I actually think he is a stronger character as an old grumpy man who's upset about his I tomatoes. do too. I think I he's too. a way stronger right. character. Um, so I love old Marcus. He's awesome. Old Marcus is great. My God, they're tomatoes. That, that, <laughs> that literally, I will never forget that line. Um, and I also love the new mob they introduced. The the robot army, I think, is way more interesting than I thought it was going to be because usually fighting bots is kind of a pet peeve of mine. I think robots aren't that interesting usually. Uh, but they did a great job. And then the way they alter that faction in Gears 5, no spoilers, is also really cool. Uh, five is so underrated. I, I mean, I replayed this game uh, like six months ago, so I, it's fresh in my mind, but I really like that game. I need to play it again. I literally don't uh, know how you play as many games as you do, Travis, but no life, no positivity. family, no loved ones. <laughs> go, 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 go. <laughs> oh man. But we'll, we'll see. Uh, you know, there's some pretty, um, uh, there's a lot of things they can do with gears and it's been in dev a long time. The tech behind it, you know, they've, they've polished up gears five. They did hive busters. They, they, if you turn on gears five right now on your series X, by the way, you can play that in 120 FPS. You can play it in 60 FPS. It's eye meltingly gorgeous. It, it's a beautiful game. What coalition does with unreal. So I'm really excited to see what they do with gear six. Now state of decay three, which Dan, I'm going to lean on you for this one. So state of decay three is supposed to kind of take, state of decay to the next level right be that kind of full featured open world zombie sim we haven't seen anything from this game all we've seen is a cinematic trailer we haven't seen any gameplay and they've been in development for a long time now they were brought on by microsoft they've expanded their studio so i have to say that expectations are quite high for this um well where are you at with it to speak like the dragon's dogma right i i don't want to speak for dan but my expectation is that it will be expanded. It will also be a little bit junky, right? Like that's what this team puts out. That's what State of Decay is. Um, and that can be okay if they make a good game out of it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it's 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 my favorite Xbox game. It's probably the one I put most hours into. I love Undead Labs. I think uh, I was, I'm much higher on two than I was on one. One was really, really? kind of a rough. Yeah, I love two. That's surprising. Uh, okay. <laughs> And they've and supported to so the support. They, they just I, I love too as well, new. but I I I I I don't know for one, so for whatever reason my friend group was really into one, and then two they're divided on. There's some of us that really liked it, of which I count myself. But about half of my friend group were like, "Oh, it wasn't the same as one." So I mean, just, there's a lot more to it. It was definitely more. Uh, I don't know how to say it. it maybe I feel like one one did. A, one did a better job at certain things like your relationships with the survivors. And it felt like a little more canned, whereas two was sort yes. of like. Right. More kind of open, I guess. Yes. Yeah, I'll agree with that. Um, they've done a great job supporting it. They're still, I mean, just a couple of months ago, they put out a whole new update where you basically add randomized uh, events or, or conditions to whatever it is you're doing. You can turn that on and off. Uh, they they continue to you know it's still got some live service elements in it with like uh the uh what the hell is his name the bounty hunter guy or the guy that's in the van he sells you a bunch yet, of stuff yet another live service game Dan loves yeah. interesting uh, I mean it's, it's it's very light I like my life service it, it, it is light life service yeah. It is, yeah. Yeah, yeah light very very light uh, so I hope they continue that I hope there's you know they do some character creation stuff where you can kind of pick you know maybe create your own character mm. maybe a, oh a i forgot hive busters is so good hive busters is good yeah um yeah it was funny because i i told you guys i reinstalled division two and i was playing that and i was just thinking like state of decay like trying to think could you do something more like that to your to your point dan where you kind of create your character more character building exploration while having you know the obviously the state of decay world and everything that goes yeah. along with that yeah, the same the same thing. I mean, it's the, the problem with State of Decay 2 and really that kind of game is 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 it it gets kind of repetitive after a little while. Now, mm -hmm. what's nice about you know and what they did was you know they allowed you to you know take your 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 group instead of finishing out, you know, because once you finish the game ends, like your your little area or whatever it is. And then uh, you have to start it over, count. right? Yeah, yeah, you could actually just take your whole group. With the you know whatever supplies that you had to the next county, you know establish your base and do all that stuff. I would like to you That's know what I do whenever a yeah, I do it every time. Gone. Like I, I don't yeah. <laughs> Just I've never take all actually, my stuff and I move to the next county, different name, 
different yep. life. <laughs> bow tie, Travis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, it's, it's not it, you don't have to think a whole lot which is you know right up my alley you know just <laughs> kind of mindless you know shoot the zombies you know it's always you know you always hit that you always know when you hit that that peak of when like you, you're you're struggling 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 and then it's just like oh here it is here it is yes you know and then then you just kind of own <laughs> everything i mean that's that's the kind of the feeling i get from that game and i loved it i probably have 500 plus hours into it, I would say. Yeah, you've played Jeez. that game a ton. A yeah, he's played Jeez. a lot, son. I really like. I think I reviewed down. that game. Good game. I, I think. Yeah. Did you review it, Dan, for us I way back when? I did. No, I don't remember. I don't think it was. I think. I don't know. Back when they allowed you to review games before yeah. the incident. Yeah. The doc <laughs> died. One thing. Oh, the empire. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was the Kino. I really like procedural Quinoa. generation and Quinoa. the the efforts that developers make towards like emergent storytelling. And I think State of Decay is one of the games that gets the closest to that. Um, so I hope State of Decay three is great. I, I'm more excited about that as a project than Gear Six. That's just me being honest. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I think that's fair. They're both pretty great games. So I'm yeah. gonna take those. I'm looking forward to both those. We'll see what uh we'll see what happens here uh you know with these summer shows obviously we this is the first live show that Keeley's doing with Summer Game Fest we'll see if it's all ads and you know the usual stuff we get or if we get some uh kind of uh you know interesting debuts with Xbox and UB directly after it I have to think they'll save obviously their stuff for there uh UB of course uh if you guys didn't see as soon as they announced this show they updated their Twitter banner to uh Sam Fisher um so they love to do know, that move i know they yeah. teased splinter cell like yeah. every year for the past decade be a, a plug into so. the division two split sam fisher's coming to the division two yeah, skull and bones skull, skull and bones yeah. <laughs> i would wear the fisher gear in skull and bones <laughs> me too the, the three two. green light sails yeah. i could do, i could do that totally yeah, I got it in ghost recon man it's speaking the of the uh the jeff Keeley stuff yeah, a developer recently told me that Jeff Keeley asks for like Burr. absurd yeah. sums of money to get like a slot of the shows. <laughs> Did you guys know this? Maybe I was just completely ignorant because no, I, I don't have to imagine it was a lot I mean, of money, but I didn't. But know. It's like it's like it is like obscene amounts of money. Like you know, an indie developer going like, "Hey, we want to announce our game, a game award show," and then Keeley's like, "Here's what here's what it's going to take for me to." get you time because i i got the i got the the ads thing but i didn't know that even the slots that are just like editorial he's selling those for like a lot of money that's that crazy surprise me how much i'm, money I'm sorry i guess my thought process thing? was of course travis i mean yeah, like it doesn't that's, surprise that's me the show is i i just assumed that that's what the ads were paying for oh well no I mean, he's got, his trips that's, that's just not how that's not how like ign would do things you know, we're not like being like, oh, you want to be IGN first game? You know, now, wait a, wait a minute. Cut a check. You're telling me that no money changes hands for the IGN first marketing pl play? No. Really? It's, it's mutually beneficial. We get exclusive stories and access and they get to promote their game with us. So honestly, that surprises me more than the, the uh, game award stuff, Travis. I, get, I guess maybe it's just I'm on this side of the fence. So seeing that is like so very surprising to me. It's just very surprising. I, I mean, I'm thrilled that you're getting to do an IGN first, but that, that to me is a marketing package, right? That's a product that IGN <laughs> sells. And if it just sells it for access, that's fine. But I, yeah, it's, it's something of value. Yeah, but I think, yeah, I, I just assumed the, the like like IGN first, Jeff Keighley's show would be you're trading, uh, you know, your ability, like Jeff Keighley gets to announce the game, right? That's what he's getting out of it. So more people see his show. So his ads are worth more. Like that's the model. It just I, seems weird to me to not only charge the ads, but then also for the content. It's crazy. I, I like that you're thinking more how I would think. Cause to me, I'm not a greedy person. You know what I mean? So I'd be like, oh, we get to show the game. I'm good. You know, I'd be happy, yeah. but I, I, it doesn't surprise me knowing because Keeley's approach is probably saying, Hey, I'm going to put 80 million eyes on your game. You better pay me to do that. That just yeah dick. for me for me it's like that's 80 how million, it works that that's eighty million works. eyes on the show make the ads more expensive because you can yeah, sell they do. them for more so like that would yeah, be which my, he probably does that's just it's that, weird the, to me the problem with I, it is, say, I I thought I knew a lot about this industry but somebody told me that and I was like flabbergasted I was like what <laughs> like they that's crazy uh, and I yeah 
uh, it's just yeah. so disingenuous then. I mean, because all this thing, it's, it's oh, I'm, 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 you know, I, we're bringing you all this great stuff because we're all gamers and this and this and this. Yeah, they paid me a crap load of money for the five second slot. Of course that they I did. Them. You know, that's garbage. All right. Either, <laughs> listen, you, you can make enough on the ads, you know, to buy a new shoe of Nikes for your next show that you got to, you know, wear with your suit, like some kind of pretentious a hole. Or, or or fund your Kojima trips or whatever. Stay in rant time. Do. Stay in rant time. Let them go. Crazy, crazy that that's. I I would never. I would. I'm on Travis's side on this. I don't. I don't know how that's even the thing. Like that. That's, that's crazy. It's just very surprising to me. But maybe maybe that's the difference maybe between traditional media and whatever I, the influencer I, thing. But I agree. I agree function. with you guys. It's just not surprising. It's not an editorial <laughs> function that the Game Awards performs or that Summer Games Fest performs, right? It's just a showcase, right? It's not IGN. It's not a consumer reports mechanism. I don't understand, I guess, why you wouldn't sell that spot, except, of course, Dan views it well, as a betrayal. I guess my betrayal. concern would be that you're not showing the best content for the show. You're just showing the people that paid that were willing to pay the highest price. And to me, that does not a good show make, so... For me, I would just want to make the show as good as possible with the best reveals and then more viewers. You could sell the ads for more. And that to me makes sense because then you're getting you're doing the best for the viewer and you're doing the best for your advertisers because now you're going to have more viewers. So I don't know. The advertisers just, only see the number, right? They're not looking at like uh, the satisfaction level of the show. That'll be apparent in the next year. Uh, number. Yeah. So trend lines. My, my thinking would be better games means the number of viewers goes up and so that's all they care about right yeah but that, that's but just my just economics. Logic. you have a limited supply of slots for your show so you're going to say okay i've got 200 possibilities here because i presumably most indies would be probably. happy to be on the show probably yeah, and so you yeah. say okay we're gonna have to figure out a way to to solve this and money seems like a good way yeah i bet i bet he doesn't charge kojima jack crap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I have to wonder i have to wonder like is kojima mm -hmm. like a sponsor of the show or is he just getting like friends with benefits situation mm -hmm. yeah yeah, yeah. Well, anyway sorry to anyway, turn this into anyway. totally oh, uninteresting mind. insider gossip but i just no uh, it's clearly an episode about it. ethics and games journalism oh, yeah right. make right. that the headline it'll <laughs> run for years um so anyway, I I am excited that Ubisoft is back. So I should be Travis. Are you? We got to talk offline because I would like. It would be awesome if you would come up to LA for one of these, uh, or come down to LA, excuse me, yeah. for one of these uh, events. Because I'm I plan to be at the Xbox show uh, on June seventh, and then or excuse me, June 9th for the Xbox show. Uh, and I'm gonna reach out to Ubisoft because it's a live event. I presume we'll see if they have. Crowd yeah. So I was I was originally planning on going down because we're also doing an event IGN live around that time. Right. Um, right, right. But I am no longer certain that <laughs> I will have a reason to be a good reason to be there. So uh, I'm, I'm basically just waiting to see if I get an assignment around that time. I usually know my okay. assignments like a month in advance. So probably sometime in May I'll know like, okay, cool. if I have a role down there, but uh, yeah, there, <clears throat> I don't know. a lot of last minute stuff going on. So we'll see. Fair enough. Okay. Fair enough. And but yeah, can, anyway. can I walk back one step here? I know we're obviously already running long, but Ains, you said something like this was the first live Summer Games Fest show. But what was opening night live before? Right. Like Keely always did a summer live show. This is the as I understand it. Correct me if I'm wrong, anyone. But I think they said this is the first live show with us with an audience like he. Oh, uh, I see what you're stuff. saying. OK. You know what I mean? Like where like I could go to it. Right. Or you could go to it. There's tickets yeah. that he's going to be selling. To All right. It. Yeah. For three thousand. So, uh, so I don't know how that changes the show or what's going to happen. That's why. That's what I meant at the beginning when I said, "Is this going to be like uh, the video game awards, where it's a bunch of because uh, that's a live show too, but we still get all those ads and promotions and everything else. So it's going to be interesting to see because, like, if you think about how Ubisoft or Xbox do their shows, which is more in the old E3 style, June 3 style. Um, you don't get all those kind of, you know what I mean? Streamer ads and all the stuff that Keely plugs all the time. Yeah, so. no, I would expect it to be like opening night live has been, uh, only that where he, we had the, the kind of green screen walk arounds and have the, the backgrounds change would have to be different <laughs> for how it's presented to a live audience would be my guess, mm -hmm. but that would make opening night live was a version of the game awards. So I would expect it to be similar. Hmm. Yeah, I guess we'll see. 
I won't uh, I won't actually be able to get to LA by the 7th. I'll be in Colorado for a family vacation. I'm actually the way this works out, I may actually be flying from Colorado and having my family drop me off at the airport in Colorado and Denver to then fly to LA so I can be there for the uh, Xbox show. You're so, already out would, there, might as well, right? Yeah, I mean I'm halfway there, you know, or a quarter it's way the west. whatever. <laughs> so uh the only other thing i want to mention here and this is courtesy of uh, our, our buddy jez over at windows central he uh mentioned uh he wrote an article yesterday that uh basically breaking the story that uh sarah bond has formed a new team dedicated to game preservation within xbox uh so the quote saying we are building our strong history of backwards compatibility and we remain committed to bringing forward the amazing library of xbox games for future generations of players this was tied Back to the comment she had made during the business update around them already working on their next generation of hardware. So uh, it, not too much to discuss here other than the fact that I like that Xbox is talking about continuing to keep all of your game library playable as they move forward with new hardware. I think Hell I, yeah. I, 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 I wish that all of the three major kind of console players would do that as well. I, I think it's pretty much a certainty that they will i mean it would be i think so too i just like i like hearing it you know what i mean i I, a, I think it's cool that um phil spencer said something in a re, in an interview a while back where that, that i thought was really interesting where he said we lost the worst generation to lose yes the xbox one generation because it was when everybody was building their digital libraries yep. if you don't bring that digital library forward at any point in time you completely lose that advantage and so yep. it would hurt xbox a ton but it would hurt like playstation even more because then all those people no longer have any faith that their digital library that they've been building up has any meaning, right? They can't take Great. it with them. And it's so why I, think I think it the would switch be, too is definitely going to be, I think it would know, be suicidal if they everything. didn't. And yeah. yeah, I think it would be suicidal if they didn't. And the only uh, example of this that goes against what I'm saying is the PSVR two, which is very weird that that happened. But also I think it might have something to do with how new that market is. And I, I think they can get away with it more with that expectation. So I don't know. It, it's a very weird situation, but I, I do love to see it. And I, I have to imagine it's going to be a standard going forward forever. Hope so. Hope so. Um, let me get the super chat from Pompa, Mr. Pompa himself. Ah, the five dollar super chat. Hey, Pompa, Dan falling apart. Sounds like he needs some quinoa in his life. For sure. He pronounced For it sure. right. Got it. Yeah, he, you just it's it's all through the nose, Dan. You gotta pronounce it like the people who eat it. Quinoa. You know it. <laughs> you know? All through the nose. <laughs> I'm a, I already know I'm gonna hate this. I can just look at something. Honestly, you know? it's pretty good. It's pretty quinoa good. can, can be good. I, it's like I it's like it, a light rice almost. Like I don't know. Yeah. It's yeah, it's like nothing. It rice. Right, rice without the unnecessary carbs, you know. Yeah. Carb a little it's hell. Not sure where you think I'm worried about carbs. <laughs> so, I mean, just give me my rice. Do you like rice? <laughs> I love rice. You'll like yeah. quinoa then. I yeah. think you'll like quinoa then. Like quinoa. As long as it's cooked right, it's got some sauce in there, some seasoning. Yeah. Could be real don't, good. Not the mushy, wet kind. Like, you gotta you don't do eat it, it right. It's don't good. eat it plain. I watched a guy eat a plain bowl of quinoa once, and afterward he goes, That was pretty bland. <laughs> I, was, I was like what Did you just, are you insane <laughs> crazy quinoa. i think he was surprised yeah um, he was surprised Pompa, by thank it. You. it was very it was very funny um all right boys i think the last thing i just want to mention which i'm sure you guys i think are excited for is tomorrow as we're recording this of course is the uh the big trailer for star wars outlaws uh so the story trailer so i'm excited to see this i'm actually more excited i don't know about you guys but personally i'm more excited for this game than i was um survivor did i survivor yeah i have no idea i don't know personally. i think yeah i, I think I, it's got a possibility i i really liked avatar frontiers of pandora for instance and mm. so i i think their licensed games can be very good and i, I think this one's got a good chance but it is modern star wars as approved by yes. modern disney good um good did i, I thought you loved uh I, incorrect there. I thought you loved uh what was the show that i still haven't watched that you raved about Andor. Andor is fantastic but you know uh, that's disney the approved. exception that you proves the you rule can't, you, you can't oh that's that is a fallacious argument and you know it 
Uh, question that proves the rule. Something that disproves my theory means my theory is more correct. Yes, that's how logic works. Um, for sure. Okay. Well, let's take on. Let's take into account then the Mandalorian and the Book of Boba Fett and the current state of Star Wars movie. You're, you're describing every creative company that Obi-Wan has Kenobi. misses, my friend. And uh, Travis, I, I appreciate your, I your willingness to, to tilt at these windows, to do it? but Disney is clearly in a downward spiral. Uh, I, I mean, I will not comment on Disney as a whole, but I will say that their Star Wars content includes victories and includes L's. Uh, High Republic is a great example of something that they're just crushing it with. That entire new How's era the, is amazing. Um, and how are the publishing yeah. sales on High Republic? Do you happen to know? I, again, I'm looking at quality here, <laughs> not at how their sales are, because that is irrelevant when you're looking at the quality of the product. And so therefore, and you so can you kindly piss off good sir <laughs> i say to you sir you are wrong and out of your depth you old uh, i just want to understand what you mean by killing it and i'm glad we got that clarity yeah yeah no i'm talking about the quality of the product they like all like all uh creative endeavors there's a you know can't all be winners there's book of boba fett i i thought that was not that great either but Obi-Wan was an affront to the entire enterprise. Okay, that is hyperbolic (laughs) as all hell, but I will say to you that uh, the the fact that there are victories does not make your theory that their Star Wars content is bad. Andor is one show is one show that they basically didn't pay attention to that they brought in outsiders to make completely separate from the Disney mainstream and were surprised that anybody liked it. So I think it does. Did you like Rogue One? Rogue One was, was oh, okay. okay. So now there's two. Oh my God. It's like, it's like you're wrong. That's crazy. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> you know, Rogue One's almost a decade old. <laughs> yeah. And it was a Disney product. So, I mean, if, if, yeah. is, if you take out all the examples that disprove you wrong and only look at the ones that support your argument, then you're absolutely right. You have now exhausted the entirety of the set of <laughs> Star Wars products <laughs> that are good. Yeah, I mean, you guys remember Empire Strikes Back? That shit was the bomb. <laughs> not, not a Disney product, but yeah, I mean, there's, yeah, okay. you can you can look at many, many examples of things that are good uh, under the Disney era, including in the video game space. Jedi Survivor is a great example, Disney era. So, I mean, I don't if, think you, if, you, if you don't if you don't look good. at the numerous examples that disprove you, then you're right. So, I think we can, I think we Love can agree guess. on that at least. I don't think the Jedi games are particularly good. Yeah, I am hopeful. Games. I started out by saying I'm hopeful that the Outlaws game will be good. <laughs> High Republic? Uh, I really, High honestly, Republic. I really want to talk about Last Jedi, but we'll save that for another day. Sure. Um, yeah. Always, <laughs> always down to talk about Last Jedi. Great movie. No. But I, uh, I, I'm excited to the prospect of this game. Um, open world, Star Wars, Ubisoft, as Hogue said, you know, they, they have fun with their licenses sometimes. I think the game looks good, you know. That's all I'm looking for. Like, I don't think that I'm not looking at this to be my game of the year. I'm looking at it as a fun kind of open world Star Wars adventure. That's it. Well, and certainly that picking off the story trailer separate from what they announced as their Ubisoft show suggests to me that this is this is an earlier coming game than I thought it was. So it's coming this year still. They said it's coming this year. Like middle of the year rather than holidays is more on the table. I bet you we get the release date at UB forward in June. Mm -hmm. That would be my guess. And if we get the story out, trailer like September? tomorrow, September, sorry, October, release date, early, early fall, you think? Yeah, yeah I could go probably. with that. I would guess. Yeah. Maybe I, mean, I, I wouldn't like be surprised by that summer release. I, I really wouldn't be. Uh, if if they're putting a story trailer out at the top of April, I mean, okay. their, their marketing plan is probably three months from there. But yeah, maybe know. they have the June show and say it comes out in July. You know, it could also. Yeah, I don't know. That's interesting. I don't know. It kind of anyway. kind of makes me it kind of makes me more nervous that it's coming out this quick when we've seen almost n- none of it. But I don't know. I, I'll hold well, out. We've hope. seen literally I, none of it, right? It was just a rendered. No, no, we saw. No, no, no. We, we, we did gameplay. see gameplay. We saw gameplay. Okay. Yeah. I just missed one. It. One. Uh, they did one gameplay. Yeah. And it, and, it, and it looked it looked good, but again, you never really know until you play it. And so I'm excited to play it. Um, I hope that it is. Um, I hope it is amazing, but we'll, we'll see. Cool. Oh, you know, we get that tomorrow. We'll talk about it uh, next week, obviously. So it can't be worse than Last Jedi. <laughs> no, Last Jedi's great. You just don't get it. That's fine. You just don't get it. I'll teach uh, you all I... about it someday. I'll tell you. Uh, by the way, you're one of your. I sent you. 
I sent you my article on Last Jedi. I know, and it was terrible. And I can I'll explain to <laughs> you why someday. It was awful. Travis, it was really awful. One of your biggest supporters. Oh, but that's okay. One of your biggest supporters in our chat, Eleanor, has this to say. Yeah, no. So I, I've had people talk <laughs> wow. about this a lot, and you're so wrong. And I will explain to you why you're wrong in 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 ways the arguments are so easy to defeat, it's really not even fun for anymore. And and you can actually see me talk about some of those topics in the season gaming uh, discord because somebody asked me about it and I had a little bit of free time at the time and I wrote yes. some stuff about it and the guy was so wrong. It was funny. Uh, and everybody was kind of laughing at it. So you can go and see <laughs> that, but yeah, you're, you're wrong. And, and I will be happy to tell you oh, why. Man. Well, the easiest argument to make against Travis is that it fractured and destroyed the star Wars fan base. And Disney is paying <laughs> in full for the loss of that Star Wars intellectual property over the past that it did. I mean, if you if your argument is that the Star Wars fan base is a dumpster fire, I will so agree with you because they don't know they and don't fomented know, primarily by don't know the how to take error the in judgment that is the last Jedi. Yeah, I, I I would I would say Rise of Skywalker and and a walking back of some of the stuff they should have stood their ground on, but they would have um, been stronger if they hadn't done the worst possible thing. I agree there. Rise of Skywalker? Yeah. No, Rise of Skywalker was a big mistake. I, will not I described that. Rise of Skywalker as you throw half of the audience out with Last Jedi, and then you say, I'm going to go back and throw the rest of the audience out with Rise of the Skywalker. Yeah, no, it literally, like, even even if you don't think that The Last Jedi is good and you have just bad opinions, uh, the, the fact that The Rise of Skywalker doesn't satisfy either audience, it doesn't finish the story that it set up, I think... You, you can't even really give The Last Jedi a chance to be redeemed post-mortem, you know what I mean, via it, the ending of that trilogy, just because I think Disney got scared of its own fan base, which happens all the time. I think creatives should have a little bit more balls and stand by the decisions they made. Uh, it's true. But yeah, the, the, Although the Ryan fan, Johnson the, did salt the earth on his way out, so there wasn't I, a lot I, 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 I completely disagree, and I, I think anybody <laughs> who says that didn't watch the second half of the movie. Uh, but yeah, I wish the, I didn't. Uh, yeah, I, I wish you didn't too, frankly, because <laughs> you're part of the of the the uh, the, All the right. fire fan. All right, we're calling time on the Star yeah. Wars. Uh, yeah. I shouldn't have brought up Outlaw. Anyway, I happens. hope it's good. You did this, Ains. You can't get mad. I at brought us. up a you game. Can't bring up the Last Jedi. No, no, you said, you said you said Last Jedi. You <laughs> brought it up. for the record. It was Ains. So he Ains cannot blame us for getting heated over. Yeah, it. trigger words. Sorry, guys. I forget that my cast here has trigger words. <laughs> 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 Oh, I love you. It's great. Um, Eleanor says, let it continue. No, we're going to go ahead and wrap up for the week. Um, Can I make one I, more call out before we wrap course, up for the yeah. week? Because I do want to mention, I didn't see it on your list. I should have added it to, for you. But I did want to mention that I'm, I am continuing to be excited about the Zao game that yes. is coming out this month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that had some announcements this week, had another trailer, had an announcement that they were also going to put it out entirely in Swahili. Yes. And I think there's a lot of cool things that are happening with that game that I, is actually the one I'm excited about the most this month. So nice. I, would I, I really say, have uh, a lot of hopes for that game. Me too. I think it looks fantastic. It actually looks a, a lot of similar in terms of gameplay as uh, the, you know, the new Prince of Persia, which I adored. Um, I love that kind of, Side-scrolling, Metroidvania, earn your abilities type, you know, explore the world type thing. So it looks fantastic. I love what they're doing with it. I love the story behind it. So I'm completely with you, Hope. Um, the only other thing I, I was going to mention, which I have as our last bullet point here, it's not that we need to talk about it today, but it only occurred to me as I was doing these notes that the early access for No Rest for the Wicked is in like a week and a half. Uh, so I'm super excited about that as well because that's uh, you combine ARPG with like, sold stuff and you you've sold me so yep pumped mm. a lot of good things coming so yeah <laughs> dan's like i'll be playing oh i didn't i forgot to make dan happy earlier when currently playing oh, yeah, you know what i, I reinstalled this morning earlier dan hitman three good job man why'd you install it so the guys i support over <laughs> at rkg they have this series uh the three of them called the three i won't go into this but they call it three ways basically they they went through various levels of hitman and they take turns and they play each their own way and all three of them play vastly differently right so it's kind of comical to watch them conquer you know and assassinate people in different ways and it, it just got me thinking like oh there's still a bunch of levels in hitman that i didn't play because i only played the core of hitman 3 so i missed the oh, dlc man. and plus when they remade the earlier levels um so i was like oh, i'm gonna reinstall this and start goofing around with it again did they add me as a killable celeb was that you guys sent me a screenshot. 
Oh, what was that? Wasn't I a hunt? What, there was some like tie, I think. They said like there's going to be a new. Oh, like, yeah, it was, it was a, yeah. It was a promotion. Did we find out who that was? It is. No. Okay. No, it, it looked like yeah. the little logo we use for you in, in yeah. our chat. I've been doing a lot of mocap for that. So uh, <laughs> enjoy killing me. One of the options is you can just wait like a couple hours and I'll die on my own. So I think that's going to be really innovative. <laughs> Your heart just so, explodes. Yeah, my heart just explodes if you just wait a little bit. <laughs> so pretty good. Honestly, if you uh, think about it, waiting is the ultimate way to kill your enemies. Sure. Let them go. I'm waiting in Hitman for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, but anyway, that's what I meant to mention that's earlier. Fun. So I'm excited to dive back into it and have some fun. So I did want to ask you real quick, only because you know you're the guy. I'll ask you after the show. Don't need to talk about this. Um, mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, getting back into the swing of things over at SG, uh, like I said, check out our savior, savior list review of that game. It's up on the channel on the site. Finally, did the Nathan Drake Prime 1 statue. You can check that out. Um, I wrote an article on uh, Xbox last week with some of the industry data. It actually got a lot of hits, so thank you for that. It was also referenced by Jez. It was referenced by Xbox Era uh, yesterday with John's article as well. So, um, And I, I was reached out to uh, by a lot of people about that, so thank you. You can check that out. It's basically it's not an opinion article. It's just me kind of showing the industry data talking about some of the things xbox has been talking about recently sarah and phil and the like so you can check that out uh for the record which uh if you follow sg closely you know was me and carl talking about technology mostly carl um so we're going to be doing an upcoming episode uh talking about some of the changes in um console and uh hardware uh ps5 pro potentially coming switch to and what's coming there so you can check that out carl knows his stuff inside and out so that's always fun and then lastly, I'm also streaming again, uh, running through Dark Souls 3 again. Uh, one of my favorite games, um, but what? playing for extra life. Yeah. <laughs> you get more and more like Dan every week on the show. Every week Why? you get close because you, you know how he only plays like three games, but for hell along. Yeah. Like every, yeah. every week it's like Elden Ring, Dark Souls 3, <laughs> Halo 5 or Halo uh, Infinite. You play like three or four games now <laughs> well i didn't know what to stream and i was like i can stream halo like normal i could stream finish or romance or <laughs> or no <laughs> <laughs> you, never, you never wound up with your boo we never got to no see i did i did get pack. pretty far but i yeah i don't know where i ended on that one but yeah so anyway but it's for extra life i think i called it out before um the link is out there, but we're, you know, doing a big raising in April. So any uh, contributions to that are welcome. So that's enough out of me. Uh, Travis, go ahead. Shout it out, man. Yeah, I got five reviews. I did five reviews in, in, in March. So that's <laughs> a pretty busy month for me. Is that all? Uh, that's all, dude. Yeah, it was. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Outlast Trials, uh, Contra, Operation Galaga, Tribes 3 Rivals, South Park Snow Day, and Outpost Infinity Siege five games uh so yeah that was a fun month uh this month i'm doing um no rest for the wicked early access and another crab's treasure the souls like game where you play as a crab underwater um which both sound pretty fun so i'm gonna have fun with that uh you can look uh all month long uh for ign first articles about eternal strands uh which we are uh, showing to the world this has been super fun to work on um and then i've got a uh i'm covering the final shape destiny dlc gameplay reveal that's happening this week and we'll see how that goes <laughs> uh so i i'm honestly all, all jokes aside i know i i sometimes i'm harsh on destiny out of love because i love the game um but uh i i am very hopeful that 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 this ends up being uh the send-off that fans deserve and have waited for for 10 years so i'm hopeful for that it um, should be a big moment and it should be it should be. I really hope it is. So uh, I will be covering that this week. And uh, yeah, that that's me. Cool. Uh, before Hogue, I hand it to you. We've got Don. Ah, make BitCast a three-hour podcast. <laughs> Approved. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we you notice how we been. came in at a tight two hours the last time we were on? We, we did. did. It's because it wasn't all four of us. <laughs> that's why when it's four of yeah, us yeah because you can it. stoke fires and and yeah i would never how dare you sir um don thank you very much appreciate you uh ho shout it out sure well we just did a video on my channel where i interviewed my wife who was on the jury of a murder trial here in southeast michigan and so if you're interested in that process i think it was a very good interview uh, and there's a lot of stuff in there that I didn't know because, frankly, as a lawyer, 
I'm almost never going to be invited to be on a jury. Uh, <laughs> so I think it was a good interview. Check it out on the channel. And then we'll do more videos probably this week going forward. I don't know what we're going to talk about because the video game industry keeps surprising me. So we'll see. I might do a Hangouts and Headlines pretty soon. So if you like any of that, come check us out on YouTube. We have a lot of fun. And if you like paywalls or talking about industry drama, you can see that I just did a video for Last Stand Media uh, that talks about Sweet Baby Inc. and all the fun that happens when we talk about consultancies over there. So you can check that out <laughs> as well. I'm sure the comments will be fantastic on that. Yeah, video. no kidding. I still try to bring reasonable minds may differ to all that, but we'll see. I, as I complimented you on yesterday, I think you do a very good job in that vein. So it's probably the one thing about SBI I will actually watch. So looking forward to it. I think it's a good conversation. I, I really do. I missed it all. I, I missed it all when I was out. And then I came back and it was like everything's on fire, you know? So kudos to even talking about it. Cause I feel like even talking about it, people are going to label you one way or another. Yeah. So. Casco, I've got that last week. Just talking about it openly you know, we got comments of all sorts so it was lovely i think i jokingly uh, say on that episode that someone's going to clip out something here take it out of context and attack one of us yeah, for sure oh, of course of course yeah and that person's going to be me <laughs> I'm, I'm working on it later later, later today on the channel after, later after the today. podcast i'm listening i'm looking i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna cut some words maybe do some ai deep fakes to oh, put boy. in some extra stuff you didn't say and uh, that's going to be going live on with a, with a big sponsor by Hoag Law. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, it's it's the them all into rabbits. On page of IGN, we're going to get that to 350 million <laughs> viewers. You know, we're going to make sure everybody sees it. So uh, very excited. I can do that, by the way. I Sounds the like power. a project. I have the power to just promote on homepage. I He's like, I have the power to boom. ruin you. <laughs> isn't that isn't that crazy? Like, well, you have I the power to hit the button, but I assume that there's a talking to that comes after that. So, yeah, oh, there's going to be sure, something else. For sure. yeah. You have I the mean, power to realize I mean, the consequences. I don't know how long it would be live, and you could obviously see I was the person who did it in our history. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. but I could. Uh, yeah, the, there there is no careful. oversight at SG. We don't, get the, we, we don't get the viewers, but you know, there's no oversight. If I put something out there, I can leave it as long as I want. All right, you've been so, warned, yeah. IGNHR. Whenever you decide to sever ties, <laughs> literally and figuratively, you want to take away that access first. Uh, yeah, that's great, def absolutely. Uh, as someone who's worked in the corporate area, I can guarantee you that's what you want to do because yeah, I've I'm, seen some I'm, things in my day. I say this knowing the consequences. I'm such a security risk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we did get one uh, final super chat, uh, which is appreciated. Uh, Claude Simeon, the $2 yes. super chat. Thanks for the Doki Doki LC record. Literature Club. Liter Literature Club. Literature Club. Okay, I don't know what the hell that is. Months <laughs> ago. Great fun. Great, great. It game. is a mildly terrifying existential crisis of a video game that is also <laughs> excellent. I love that this is spreading. I spread it to Hogue. Hogue spread it to Claude Simeon. Now more people are going to have to go through this torment. Doki Doki Literature Club. It is a popular game from what I understand. It's I, very I good. And yeah. it's like, actually, that should have been the first dating sim you played. Because yeah. I, I even said Romancelvania wasn't that good. That You were like. No, oh, it was it. more for the laughs than anything yeah. else. Yeah. But Claude Simeon, thank you very much to close us out with a super chat. Appreciate you. Chat, you've been awesome today. Anyone checking us out? We're glad to be back, all four of us properly. Thanks for hanging out and having some laughs with us today. Hey, oh, hold on, hold on. Oh, hold on. real quick, quick, shout out to my Hawkeye women's basketball women playing for the championship today in about one hour. I know why they give them this weird time slot. Can't even put them in prime time for some reason. But <laughs> good luck to uh, Caitlin and uh, – and all of our teammates, Gabby Marshall and Mara Davis. And are you on a first name basis with Caitlin Clark, Dan? Yes, Caitlin, <laughs> yeah, yes. Look, I DM'd her right now, just said good luck. Hope you well. What 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 she and 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 Angel Reese uh and Paige Becker is everybody has done for this game this year has been amazing to watch, but it's crazy to now watch it come crashing down. Now that women's basketball has become a little bit more mainstream, you're getting the complete annihilation on the socials about you know just how terrible some people are and the just the fighting back and forth the the toxic fandom the the jealousy it's incredible it's incredible to watch something just rise like meteorically in less than a year and then at the very end where the championship is coming up today just be crashed down by a bunch of dumb dumb babies uh that you know just, you've arrived when you have haters yeah, exactly. I guess that's Travis. Right. Are you like me right now that I didn't know any of this was going on? Yeah, you no, didn't like, see, like I, the Diana Taurasi clips and things. I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, total, 
I'm totally used to this, Ains. Uh, Hoag asked what, how I play so many games. It's because I have such huge knowledge gaps in other areas. And so just like... I have no idea what you guys are talking yeah, about. Yeah. I like mean, I, I know this... there's a women's basketball game going on. That's the extent of it. Yeah. Yes. Well, anyway, Hazel Park I is amazing. UConn is, is often whiny. Yes. And various members of prior teams are clearly a little bit, let's see, jealous, jealous of the youth and talent of other people mm -hmm. yeah. so That's life what's happening so yeah. life Humans. yes but like where it would have gone under the radar before caitlin clark has in fact brought it up to like full espn levels of nonsense okay all right yep. it's incredible cool. but it's awesome that they're playing i don't think they're going to beat south carolina they are an incredible team and and camilla cardasso is just so good uh that, that whole team don staley's an amazing coach They've been rolling everybody. They're undefeated this year. Uh, so if they go in there and just give them an effort, I'll be happy <laughs> at this point. But as a sports fan of uh, the Cubs and the Bears, uh, the Bulls, Blackhawks, uh, I don't really get a whole lot of excitement <laughs> in championships in my life. Uh, definitely not with Hawkeye football. Uh, so I will take this where I can get it. Uh, go hey. Hawks. The Blackhawks are the worst team in the NHL right now. So congrats on that. So yeah, no problem. Even though they got the, good. you know, apparently the, the best, you know, player in the draft. No, he's not the best. Generational player. talent. Yeah, no, no. The generational talent of he is the he's uh, the new young kid. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. It's terrible. Yeah. But you know, hey, I'll take what I can get. So thank you, Caitlin, for an amazing career uh and an amazing uh just run of just greatness. You know, I don't care if people hate her. Not sure why they do, uh, but she's good. She's really okay. good. Yeah, score more. Not what I, score more not points. What I expected to end this on, but here we anybody are. in, I'm in tune in next week for the next part of the women's basketball cast. <laughs> like what? Hey, let me let me get <laughs> my thing. Everybody else has got their thing. It's my thing. No, no, it's fine. I I, I expect a, a shout out is different from a ten minute rant about women's basketball, but I'm with you. You know, do what you got. I do. thought it was lovely. <laughs> All right, fair enough, fair enough. Good, good luck to him. Uh, I don't have a dog in the fight. To... All right, so root for the Hawkeyes. There we go. Uh, Ains, Ains, are you okay, up. bud? Man, what happened? We broke him. It's actually not him. internet lag. That's just Did what I freeze? he's doing. It's just what he's doing <laughs> in real life. Yeah, oh, real life. okay. Yeah. Well, so uh, no, you're back. Mark. <laughs> no, you're I, down my again. only last three hours, so we've got to That's go ahead fine. and get out of here. Go yeah. recharge, Ains. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go take a nap, so it's fine. We'll both recharge. There you no. go. All right, gents. Still Good luck, happens. Dan. Thank you, chat, for everyone hanging out with us. Awesome to be back. We will see you next week. Not two weeks this time. We will see you next week. Hope you have a great week of gaming, and we will talk to you then. Peace. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>